17th ranked, undefeated. They've got a seven-game winning streak on the line tonight against the Blue Devils. Series dates back a long time. As a matter of fact, Duke leads the all-time series. 13 wins, 11 for Tennessee, and a couple of games have ended up in a tie. Duke trying to rebuild under Steve Spurrier and Johnny Majors, of course, trying to take his team back to the Super Bowl. The last time Tennessee went there was in 1985. They're the captains at midfield. Terrence Cleveland, Preston Warren, Eric Still, and Lee England, who was the holder for Tennessee. Snap. Yeah. Terry Metz yeah, is the center. Duke, of course, has just won the toss. Or you want to receive the ball. Which is, they want to receive which team you want to send. Put your back over there. Put your back over here, White. Duke wins the toss. Receive. Jimmy Harper is the referee. He just signaled that Duke won the toss and took the football. Ron, that's no surprise. The more they get it, the more chance Coach Spurrier has they feel to score. Last year, Duke was 7-3-1. They won their first five games, including the contest here at Newland Stadium over Tennessee. They went on to beat uh, Northwestern, the Citadel, Virginia, and Vanderbilt, along with Tennessee, in that run of five straight wins. Then Clemson really thumped them, 49-17. That kind of unraveled the team a little bit. They did come back to finish the season 7-3-1. In Spurrier's first year at Duke, they went 5-6. And, and, of course, Tennessee's... 1988 season well documented the 0-6 because Duke really started the season on the bad notes and Tennessee came back to win the last five and now won two straight in this 1989 football season. Ron, you can just feel the electricity of this crowd. I think many were pleasantly surprised. Maybe that's too soft a word after the win against UCLA and they're geared up and ready to go tonight. That's right. When the team came back this week and, and got at the airport Sunday afternoon, there were cramped, there were fans there crowded around. They were back at Gibbs Hall. All week long, all you've heard is people talking exciting about the volunteer performance and high expectations for the rest of the season. Greg Burke will kick it off. Quentin McCracken is deep for the Blue Devils, and we're underway at Neyland Stadium. The ball goes deep, and Duke will bring it up. Randy Jones, fastest man of the Duke team, is knocked down as he gets just across the 20-yard line. Tracy Smith was down there with number 87, Daryl Hardy. And now the Dukies come out for the first time. A wide-open, very sophisticated passing attack. And, Ron, you said you played in the NFL with the Rams and the Falcons. You said this is one of the most sophisticated offenses you've seen. They go everything from a one-back set, slot formation. Here they are coming out in a one-back set to start the ball game. Billy Ray is the quarterback. He's a good one. He's thrown for six touchdowns, but he's also thrown four interceptions this year. And he's going to throw it on the first one. Little screen pass. Good running is Duke. Picks up good yardage. Preston Warren makes the stop on Walter Jones. Jones, a 5'11 sophomore who can fly. This is a pass they used a lot against South Carolina. They built trip formation, drug Jones, the wide receiver, underneath against the grain, let him cut and dig and find a hole right up the middle of the Tennessee defense That's for a first down. Exactly. That's enough for a first down. So Duke comes out winging it. And Ray looks over the Tennessee 4-3. That's the tight end, Bud Zerber, shifting to the left side. One back offense, and Boone goes in motion. Again, they drop it off. This time, Tennessee reads it, and Boone is going to be knocked down behind the line of scrimmage. Well, they tried the same play, Ron. That's, well, almost the same play. They ran Hardy in, uh, excuse me, Boone in motion that time. Hardy, reacting from his linebacker position, pursued, beat the coverage there. There's Ray drops little... back, drops it back on the screen. Here you see Hardy beating the block of the offensive lineman, coming up just to trip Boone enough to keep him from losing his feet short game. And Bradley comes up and finishes it off along with Mark Moore. Hardy's very, very quick from his outside linebacking spot, and his quickness really helped there. It's a loss of two on the play. Throwing it down the field, and he's got his man, Bud Zerber, the tight end. Big target, 6'3", 215, a senior from Wayne, New Jersey. Last week, he caught three passes, and he's on target now. There's the starting lineup now for the Blue Devils. Billy Ray, of course, the quarterback. Clarkson Hines is the All-American wide receiver. Walter Jones is a flyer. 
Boone, one of the top receivers, is, let alone being a tailback, and Chris Brown is a punishing fullback. Offensive line's a good one. They're veterans. Terry Metz has been around for a long time, so is Chris Ford, a four-year starter. Third down, five to go. He tripped over his own man. Billy Ray goes down and just going to have to punt it. Chris Port and Billy Ray apparently got tangled up. Here we go on the replay. It was a halfback releasing inside. Boone, I believe, is the man that Ray tripped over. Had too many backs in the backfield that time. Bob, they had two instead of just one. <laughs> now, here's Breedlove, freshman punter. Second game has been punting. And he gets it away, but it's a low, wobbly kick. That'll be taken on the third catch. Bob Breedle has an interesting story. He was a freshman who had had a bad leg, had to have surgery over the summer, was on crutches, didn't look to be figuring in the punting position, but Cooper, the backup tight end, the first game of the year against South Carolina, had a punt block. Coach Furrier went looking. Brad was there. He took over the job last week and averaged 30-plus yards on three kicks. Also a great wide receiver. Here's Sterling Hinton for the first time. Tennessee's got the ball at the 40-yard line. This goes to Reggie Cobb. Gets a block from Roland Poles. And is knocked down after a pickup of about three. Duke filled nicely on the play. And Darrell Spells, the linebacker, comes in to fill up. Here are the backs and receivers for Tennessee. Sterling Hinton, the quarterback. Plenty of wide receivers with a lot of talent. Mark Adams, the tight end. Cobb and Poles in the backfield, but of course Chuck Webb will play. The offensive line has been tremendous so far this year. Eric still an All-American candidate at guard. Second down, long six. Poles. Had to get to the midfield side to pick up a first down. He's a couple of yards short. Tom Corpus makes the stop. He's a 6'5", 249-pound senior. You know, Ron, we talked to, with some of the coaches about what kind of defense is Duke playing. I'm not sure they really know. They're having a, an opportunity to explore their defense this year. They call it a multiple defense. Right now, they're running a wide tackle six with two linebackers stacked in the middle. Good cutback by Poles there to come close to the first down. Tennessee needs about a yard and a half. And Amsler is going to be close. He's got the first down as he nudges it across the midfield side. Again, Spells, the middle linebacker, makes the stop. Big Greg Amsler, who's off to a great start. Gets the first down. So far this year, 11 rushes, 59 yards, and a touchdown. Here's the Duke defensive front. They play a wide tackle six, so four down men. John McDonald, of course, is a big, strong guy. John McDonald is a powerful 6'4", 240-pound senior. The linebackers, George Edwards, he's been starting a long time at Duke. Senior defensive back, Quentin McCracken, all-star candidate. First and 10 volunteers. Hens going to throw it. Anthony Morgan's out there. He's inside the five. Wyatt Smith saves a touchdown, but Anthony Morgan went on the post, and Sterling Hinton hit him in stride. 44 yards. Tennessee had the ball at the midfield stride. They had some field to work with. Came out with two tight ends. Morgan, the only wide receiver in the game, and they went deep and threw it up to him. Tennessee had run, 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 and then Morgan goes on the post, and he's wide open, and Hinton hits him. So now Tennessee's got three cracks from the three to get it in. 11-13 to go, first period. Wishbone for Tennessee. Webb and Cobb are the tailback. Reggie Cobb, touchdown. Tennessee offensive line just knocked Duke out of there. Moved it back to the line of scrimmage about two yards. The handoff to the third back, Cobb. Leaped high into the air and into the checkerboard square end zone for the touchdown, Tennessee. 11 one to go. Impressive drive by Tennessee on the first possession. A la the UCLA game when Tennessee took the ball the first time. I should say the Colorado State game when they took the ball the first time and marched it down the field. Now Greg Burke on to attempt the extra point. Lee England to hold. Chad Good to snap it. And Tennessee leads it 7 to nothing at the 11 one mark. Ron, that's pretty much what Duke was afraid of. They're going to have to gear up for the run, and then Tennessee's got those fast wide receivers. Coach Fulmer felt like he could keep them, keep the Duke defense off balance, missing the run in the pass, and as long as they were successful running the ball, then that's going to open a lot of doors for the wide receiver U passing core to be catching some tonight. 
The drive only took a minute 55. Five plays, 60 yards. Cobb, a four-yard run for the touchdown, but there's the post pattern, Ron. They fake the down-the-line option, froze the secondary for a step or two, and that's all Harper needed to get behind him as he's sprinting down the field on the post. Here's Hinton faking down the line. Now he retreats back to pass. You can see there's no pressure on him. He just lost a big spiral down there. Harper really had to wait on the ball. If he would have been maybe a step or two more in stride, he would have went in on the catch. Dennis, he'll take it, though. 7 to nothing volunteers. Now the Duke Blue Devils will get it back. Greg Burke again will kick it off. And Randy Jones and Quentin McCracken stand deep for the Blue Devils. Burke has not been booming real deep so far this year. He gets a hold of that one, though, and sends it into the end zone. Balls were all sides, though, on the kick. They'll bring it back, and Duke will get another chance as Randy Jones downs it in the end zone. Coach Major spent a lot of time this week on the, on the kickoff and, and the punt coverage teams. He didn't feel like he was getting the, the effort and the, the success he wanted out of it. And Tennessee eager to get down the field, just started a little bit too soon. Offsides on the kickoff, offsides on the receiving team. Hold it. No, no, like, is that right? They've got the ball back where Tennessee kicked it off. And he said it was offside on the receiving team. And the kickoff team as well. It's a double penalty. So I guess line up and start over, maybe. Well, Jimmy Harper is explaining the situation now to his, to the Duke team. Billy Ray trying to figure out exactly what's going on, and that's exactly what they're going to do. They're going to re-kick it. Offside. Offside on the kickoff, kicking team, five yards offside. So Burke will put it back at the 30-yard line and will boot it, and Duke will get another chance to return it. Duke, in 1987, in Spurrier's first year, was five and six. Before that, Steve Sloan was the head coach at Duke. He was there for four seasons, never had a winning campaign. His best year, he had a couple of four-win seasons. And of course, Red Wilson was before Steve Sloan. Bob, you realize that that offside is the first penalty that Tennessee's had since the Colorado State game? Exactly. That's not something Coach Majors will be pleased with when he talks about this game. You don't have the penalty Tennessee has had. Three of them have been on kicking situations. Two on uh, fourth down punts, and then one here on the kickoff. That's the thing that Coach Majors feels like he has to have good effort out of in order to win is the kicking game. They're kicking it away from the Kraken, and now Randy Jones will take it at the five. Tennessee's got some orange shirts there, and they knock him down as he gets up to the 28-yard line. Preston Warren on the kickoff coverage team for Tennessee. And as a volunteer down, looks like Lee Wood, number 17. Lee is a junior out of Richmond, Virginia. Jones can run, and as a matter of fact, he was fourth in the Atlantic Coast Conference in the track meet in the 100 meters. On his feet there, doing a good job of covering up the ball when there's volunteers surrounding for the tackle. He didn't want to happen to the Duke Blue Devils what happened to UCLA last week, getting stripped on the return and causing a turnover. Yeah, Wood made the tackle on the play, and he got his bell rung a little bit. We talked about the penalties last week, none against UCLA. In the first game against Colorado State, Tennessee had four penalties for 25 yards, and two of those came on punt situations. Duke, meanwhile, uh, last week against Northwestern was penalized six times for 50 yards, and in the first game, four times for 22 yards. It's been a good day so far for Southeastern Conference teams. Everybody has won. Auburn's playing Southern Miss tonight. Well, what about the Ole Miss Rebels? 3-0. That's a team that, you, that Tennessee will have to look at later on in the year, but they're definitely looming to be a bigger and bigger opponent. They're playing very well in Mississippi State. Also is undefeated. And Southern Miss had the big upset win against Florida State earlier. So Mississippi's having a banner year, at least early, in college football this year. There's a scoring drive again. Only took a minute and 55 seconds. 45-yard pass set it up, and Cobb got the touchdown. Duke takes over. First and 10. They're going to mark the ball at the 29-yard line, and Steve Spurrier doesn't want his team to fall too far behind because Tennessee will really go to the running attack then. He's going to throw it. Got a man open. Hayes is crunched by Preston Warren. Clarkson Hines came across the middle, and Warren crunched him. Ouch. Ray drops back, fakes the handoff to Boone, throws the ball in the crossing pattern to Hines right here. Right there is what Tennessee's got to do. They've got to attack anybody crossing the field. Hines is still out in the middle of the 50-yard line. Warren last year played Hines a little one-on-one. -on -one. And Hines had the better of it last year, basically. 
Although the entire secondary, I guess, will take a lot of the credit for Hines' three-touchdown effort. But uh, Warren said this week he was taking it as a personal challenge to try and shut down Clarkson Hines. At that time, he really crunched him. Hines had a tremendous game here last year. I think he caught eight passes for 145 yards and yeah. three touchdowns, like you mentioned. Key to stop tonight is, is just what Preston Warren did. He stepped up in a safety position and really loosened Hines from the football. Boy, he sure did that. Hines only needs tonight 112 yards in receiving to set an all-time Atlantic Coast Conference record and 79 to pass West Chatham as the all-time Duke receiver. He just had the wrong area code there, Bob. I think he wasn't thinking straight. He came <laughs> off under his own power, though. We're ready to get started again. Yeah, let's hope he comes back. He's a great football player. Second down long, 10 yards to go for Billy Ray. Boone on a little shovel pass. Boone's going to have a first down as he gets out across the 40 to the 41-yard line. A pickup of right at 12. Kelly Days came up to make the stop. 12 yards on the carry by Roger Boone. What a story he is. 264 yards rushing this year. He's averaging 6.4 yards per rush. There's the play. Just a drop back draw. The line rushes up the field. Good blocking by the secondary coming down. Big game for a first down, keeping the drive going. Yeah, last year Boone ran the ball 185 times. He also caught the ball 73 times out of the backfield. First and 10, Duke. Boone, a cut back, not much there. Penalty comes over to shut him off. Tracy Hayworth makes the stop for the Volunteers. Daryl Hardy is also there. Penalty, of course, has had some problems injury-wise up the middle. Martin Williams has not played much. He hasn't played at all in the first two games. And, of course, J.J. Thurless suffered the knee injury. He is out. There's Roger Boone. Dangerous performer out of the backfield. Duke's got a second down and long. Seven yards to go. Billy Ray got a man open. That's going to be a first down. Preston Warren makes the stop. Boone again on the reception. He's caught passes in 24 straight games. He's also an outstanding lacrosse player, so he's a pretty versatile athlete. Five-step drop there by Ray, releasing both halfbacks out into the passing pattern. They pull up and hook up in front of the linebackers who right now are trying to get depth to protect against the deeper throws, and they're taking a seven-yard gain for almost the first down. We're third and less than a foot, Bob. Yeah, I thought he might have gotten the bad spot. I thought he had a first down, but they're going to say it's third down and short. Duke with a tight end. On the sneak. And that's going to be, and I would think he's going to have the first down on that. He had to get just to the 49-yard line, and he got well past that. Well, Ray at 6'3 and 205 pounds is pretty mobile for a college quarterback. He said he likes to run the ball, but I'm sure Coach Spurrier wants him back there throwing it instead of running. So Billy Ray, just outside the Atlanta area is where he's from, Dunwoody, Georgia basically transferred to Duke because he thought he was going to get a chance to throw the football. Anthony Dillwig was graduating. They were looking for a quarterback at the time. He sort of fit into the plans and so far has been very impressive as Duke's starting quarterback. He's got a first down now in Tennessee territory. And the tight end makes the catch and he's knocked out of bounds by Kelly Days as Dave Kalana makes the catch. Kalana, an all-ACC performer. And Kelly Days out of Dayton, Ohio. Makes the stop. There's a tight end coming right at you on the replay. He, he released outside, just drove over into the flat. Day's coming up and attacking him quick, knocking him out of bounds. Second and seven now. Drop play, boom. Nice setter step, then he's knocked down by Sean Walker. Ray gets, he's got to get uh, to about the 37 for a first down. Sean Walker has made a play where just told Clarkson Hines has just come back to the game. So Hines apparently is okay. He's got quick feet, doesn't he, Boone? Here he comes up the hole. The fullback's leading the play. What Hines? Keep his feet moving. He's not the biggest of running backs, but he's real quick, able to cut on a dime. Chris Brown knocked him down. I should say it was a lead block for Duke. And now the Dukies have another short one. Third down and two. And they're going to throw it. Plenty of time, and the ball is dropped. Boone had it right on target. Would have had a first down, but he dropped the ball. Now, if you're Steve Spurrier, what do you do? You got a freshman punter, not much experience. You're in Tennessee territory. Fourth down and two. 
I would say you're down seven and up and Ron. Why not go for it here? Almost as good as a turn. If you punt the ball in the end zone, you're just coming out to the 20 anyway. I'm sure the confidence of the Duke team is, is on the line here. If they can get a first down and keep the drive going, they'll feel a lot better about themselves, and that's what they're going to try and do. Darrell Clements brings the play, and he's flanked out wide to the right. Clarkson Hines, the receiver, to the near side. And the crowd gets up into the fourth and two. Little drop ball deflected, and it's caught by a lineman, but it's going to be short of a first down. Good alert play by the Tennessee defense. Pete Petroff made the catch on the deflection, but he's well short of a first down, and Tennessee takes over. Was it Mark Moore who got a hand on it? Great drop back. Here's Moore and Hobby both pressuring. Marion Hobby. Marion Hobby's the one that hits the ball. There's what you like to see. Linebacker coming up and sticking Boone. That may be the reason he shorthanded that ball on the play before, is the fact he knows he's going to be hit. Good Tennessee defense again. Marion Hobby with a big play. And the Volunteers take over again at the 40-yard line. Chuck Webb now into the game. Short gain on the play. John McDonald and Anthony Allen make the stop for Duke. A couple of yards of the play for Chuck Webb. There are his stats last week against UCLA. He got a lot of national attention for that effort. He played very well. Let's hope he can duplicate that performance tonight. Rowan Poles is his foot, uh, fullback. Second and six, Tennessee. 7 to nothing. Volunteers, 7-14 to go, first quarter. Kenton checking off at the line of scrimmage, changing the play. Webb. Not much there, running behind Eric Still. And Darrell Spells, the linebacker, stuffs the play. A couple of yards on it. Tennessee's going to be short of a first down. Spells, of course, is a, is a true freshman making his first start for the Blue Devils, filling the hole of... Linebacker John Howe, who we mentioned before, was lost to a bad knee injury early in the season. He hoped for the Duke faithful that he could come back by the Clemson game. Third down, three yards to go. Closer to five, though. Four wide receivers in the game for the Vols. On the draw play. Oh, one pole. Oh, no one. Oh. The defense spells again, makes the stop. Also, Preston Anderson. The defensive tackle, 6'4", 260, a junior out of Norwalk, Connecticut, came up. For the draw play, Duke was looking for it almost. They just played well. Two Duke linemen right there ready to make the play. Got no one off guard there. So Duke can't move it. Tennessee can't move it. The Volunteers are going to punt. Ken Elmore. McCracken is deep. What a good hang time. Good hang time on that kick. Bear catch at the 16-yard line. Well, that's where Duke will take over. Five pitches to go in the first quarter. We're at Neyland Stadium. It's sold out. Tennessee leads Duke 7 0. We'll be back. All things great. All things that can be great begin with a sound foundation. The 10 universities of the Southeastern Conference have been, are, and will continue to be committed to academic excellence, providing a sound foundation to what is great. Bob Kessling, Ron McCartney at Neyland Stadium. Duke on the move again. Little pass out. Not much there. Clarkson Hines kind of behind the line of scrimmage. Had to struggle to get it. Marion Hobby is there to knock him down. Hobby made a good reaction on this play. He broke out into the passing lane and almost had a chance to get a hand on the football. Cedric Klein also is there for the stop. Let's go down to the field to Mike Keith. Mike? Speaking of Clarkson Hines, Bob, he had a stinger on that play where he got hit by Preston Warren. The trainers wanted him to sit out a little bit more, but he said, no, I'm headed back in there, and he's going to take some hits from the Tennessee defense tonight, but you're not an All-American if you don't want it. Yeah. Bob? He just took a couple of hits the last time he touched the ball. Lost a yard on the play. Little the inside handoff. Boone out across the 20 to the 22-yard line. He's going to be short of a first down by about five yards or so. Mark Moore is there to make the stop. That's the kind of play that's really going to hurt Tennessee. They ran the formation of slot into the tight end of the field, into the hash. Came back to the strong side on the draw. Hand by Hobby almost floating down there, but he's hustling down the field, making a good run. Casey Rogers got there to turn him inside. Third down conversion. Duke is one out of three. Ray, so far through the year, five of eight for 27 yards. 
Hand off to Boone. I don't think he made it. Had to get across the 25, and I don't think he got there. Now, Coach Spurrier made a, uh, an allusion in the pregame show that they were a running team since uh, Boone had 201 yards on the ground last week, but as you can see, the majority of his yardage on the run comes from the draw play, which is an offshoot of the passing game. Duke's got a punt at Kerry Baylor that time, just beat Chris Port and got to the football and knocked him short of the first down by less than a yard. So Duke's going to punt it again. So Duke has had the ball three times. They punted twice, and they missed on a fourth down conversion. There's a low driving kick that Thomas Woods will take. Gets a thing. Woods in the clear. The punter's got to get him, and he won't do it. He's knocked out of bounds by a recovering Duke defense as Rodney Dickerson saves the touchdown. Thomas Woods, 45 yards on the return. 54 yards on the return. Woods stepped up on the short kick, take the return right up the middle of the field, found him a seam. Was off to the races there. Breedlove, the punter, seemed to be the last man, but you'll see him in the picture lose his footing, fall down there. Boy, Dickerson made a great play getting across the field. I didn't even see Dickerson to the last instant. He was the safety on the protector of the punter, came from across the field just to save the touchdown. Ball's inside the five. Cobb, somersault down close. Mark Allen there to stack him up. Reggie Cobb just short of a touchdown. And it will be for Tennessee now. Second down, goal inside the three-yard line. And now Tennessee apparently going to the wick zone again. Ball's at the two. Ansler's the fullback. Webb, Cobb, the running back, out of the wick zone. Cobb again. Fights and struggles, didn't pick up anything. Erwin Sampson comes over to make the stop along with 45, Daryl Phil. Tennessee so far this year has scored six touchdowns and all have come on the ground. Three minutes to go, first period. Tennessee leads seven to nothing and threatening. Here's the handoff. You can see this really the one that moved the line of scrimmage back that time, got in there. Made a big pile, good hustle in second effort with the Duke players around the ball with the gang tackle Cobb. Now Tennessee goes to the power eye with Reggie Cobb. Two fullbacks, Amsler and Poles in front, pitch to Cobb. Amsler gets a block and Cobb got a score. Great block on the corner. Both fullbacks really did a good job that time, filling the corner, letting Cobb just pretty much go into the end zone untouched, Bob. Third touchdown of the year for Reggie Cobb, and Tennessee leads at 13 to nothing at the 231 mark. Here's the pitch sweep. Hinton gets the ball to Cobb. Look at the people knocking folks down. Good people on the ground. Cobb's all that's left to do is a run to the corner. Touchdown, Tennessee. Randy Sally came over there. He was the guy knocked down by Greg Amsler on the play. There Amsler the took two of them out of the play. Great block there. Tennessee player is down. Reggie Cobb, soft, uh, junior out of Knoxville Central High School. Von Reeves is shaken up on the play. Tennessee using two tight ends down there on the short yardage goal line. Reeves, the backup, comes in at the left side with Mark Adams on the right. So Reeves will be helped to the sideline. Meanwhile, Greg Burke will come on and try to attempt the extra point. 2.31 to go. First period. And Von Reeves, 6'2", 250 sophomore out of Knoxville, Austin East, helped to the sidelines, and Burke trying to make it a two-touchdown game. He does just that. And with a couple of minutes left to go in the first quarter, Tennessee has struck quickly and often, and they lead it 14 to nothing here at Neyland Stadium. Thing at UT? Yeah. Well, that's a tough question. Best thing about UT, the atmosphere. Uh, I love the paper. Dr. Johnson. Dr. Johnson, right. It is, in a sense, a performance. It is also a, a kind of intimate sharing of information that, um, that can happen in the classroom in a way that doesn't much happen anywhere else. 
and I love him. I love him. I can't wait to take more classes from him. Fourteen to nothing, Tennessee and Duke. One thing both schools are proud of: not only are they trying to excel on the football field, they're trying to excel in the classroom. These two schools in the top 13 in the College Football Association in terms of graduation rate. Burke's going to kick it off. He hits this one well again. Way back into the end zone, and Jones says no thanks. Duke will take it on the 20. But Majors has to be proud of that kick. Yep. Let's go down to Mike Keith. Well, Bob, things may be going well on the scoreboard, but Tennessee on that punt return had players suffer two injuries. Kerry Bailey has some sort of problem with his right calf. He's on the bench with ice on it. Tracy Hayworth, a shoulder problem of some sort and an immense amount of pain. But, Bob, I think he's going to try to stay in the game. Okay, Mike, keep an eye on that for us. Billy Ray's got his hands full now, down two touchdowns. Hand off to the fullback. Daryl Hardy wrestles Chris Brown to the ground. Hardy in our pregame feature talked about the fact he never played defense in high school till his final game against Cincinnati Princeton. There's the scoring drive, of course, set up by Thomas's, Thomas Woods' uh, long punt return. Three plays, 132 on the clock, and Cobb scored his second touchdown of the night. Good gain. Five yards on the play for Chris Brown, and the Duke Blue Devils have it at the 25. They're going to let it out again. Pass is complete to his fullback, and Sean Walker is there to make the stop. Well, again, Ron, that just with the injuries on the defensive front to Kerry Bailey, that really makes the ranks even thinner. James Wilson, a true freshman from Virginia, is in the lineup there, and in fact was in on the tackle. Tennessee dropped the tackle off and helped him to cover the two backs as they shoot out of the backfield. Ray's using a five-step drop, sometimes a three, so he can get rid of the ball fast, but Tennessee's got to react to their quick passes. The pickup was good for the first down. Billy Ray off to a good start, 8 at 10. He's got a first down at his own 30-yard line, trailing by two touchdowns with 90 seconds to go in the first quarter. That was think might have been deflected. Pass was intended for Walter Jones and sailed out of bounds. Steve Spurrier's offense has gotten as far as Tennessee's 40-yard line where they were stopped on a fourth down. Spurrier from Johnson City. Terrific. So you get a shot of the backup quarterback signaling the plays yeah. in. You think we could pick those up if we knew what they were about? I doubt it. I doubt it. We'll give it a shot. Spurrier, we're going to say, was a terrific college football player on the Heisman at Florida. Went on to play in the NFL with San Francisco and Tampa Bay. Now his quarterback is going to drop back and throw it again. This time he's airing it out for Clarkson Hines, and the pass is broken up by Hines. Preston Warren had an interception, and Hines broke it up. Free safety Preston Warren was just down there playing the center field route. He had the play covered from the get-go. If it wasn't for a great effort by Hines to knock the ball out of his hands, that would have been a turnover for the Volunteers. Yeah, last year Preston returned one for a touchdown against Duke. Last week he had an interception against the UCLA Bruins. So Preston Warren, many people are touting him for all conference. A guy out of Knoxville Catholic, at one time was a being recruited by Notre Dame when Jerry Faust was there when Lou Holtz became the coach. They backed off him and he came to Tennessee. One back set by the Blue Devils. Third and long. Nothing going there. Wilson makes the tackle. James Wilson. Right in the quarterback. And Duke's going to have to punt it again. Credit to Tennessee secondary, though. Ray went to two different receivers and both were covered well. He had no resort but to cut the ball up and try to run. Ron, they're not blitzing much. They're just playing straight. They're just rushing four people, and they're doing a good job of covering the people that are out into the pattern. Coverage getting there to make the tackle. Tight end Bud Zerberer is in the punt now after that last one by Breedlove. That's another short rolling uh, kick. Didn't spiral at all. Just end over end, and Preston Warren makes the fair catch. Zerberer was the, the starting punter at the first year against South Carolina, Bob, but one of his kicks was blocked and turned into a touchdown for the South Carolina team. He lost his job because of that play, and now he's back in the action due to the short kick of Brad Breedlove on the play before. Mike, I guess the so far the early going going to Tennessee, isn't it? but what about the injuries? Well, better news for Tennessee right here. Bob Vine Reeves we saw go down on the touchdown play. His left ankle being retaped. He's all right, and they expect him to re-enter the ball game. So that's pretty good news, Bob. Yeah, we just got word too, Mike, that Tracy Hayworth just had the 
breath knocked out of him. Chuck Webb on the move to midfield. Quentin McCracken is a corner on that side that ended up making the tackle after Webb turned him and drug him for about three yards. George Edwards came up and helped out too. Under 30 seconds to go in the first quarter at Neyland Stadium. Penalty on top, 14 and nothing. Webb is a guy, he looks like he's not going anywhere. And after they marked the ball, he picked up six, seven yards. Keeps moving the chain. He got seven yards that time. This will be the last play of the first quarter. And Ampler is going to spin his way up close to the first down. He'll be a yard short. Daryl Stells again, who's been in on a lot of tackles tonight for the Blue Devils, makes the stop. And Tennessee will have a third down. And will need the conversion as we start the second period. The first quarter comes to a close on Greg Ampler's run. Tennessee with two touchdowns from Reggie Cobb. Leads at the end of the first 15 minutes over Duke, 14 nothing. Johnny Majors looks over the scene at Neyland Stadium. Sellout crowd again tonight. Very enthusiastic crowd as the volunteers try to climb higher in the polls as their 17th this week. Tony Thompson now is coming for Tennessee at tailback. So not only do the volunteers have Reggie Cobb and Chuck Webb they can throw at you. Now Steve Spurrier's got to worry about another gifted tailback, Tony Thompson. That's a, a one, two, three punch, Bob. Exactly. Cobb so far tonight, five rushes for 12 yards. Of course, two of the rushes for touchdown. One a two-yard gallop and one with four. Let's see what they do here. Power eye, third and short. Standing tailback, Reggie Cobb. He's got a big hole behind Tony Thompson's block, and Cobb's got a first down inside the Duke 40 yard line. Free safety, Owen Sampson finally made the top tackle after a good gain here on the replay. You can see a hole. The lead back knock a big hole in the line. Cobb takes a hit right here, spins out of it, almost breaks the tackle. But he picks up the first down. Again, there's the block. Tony Thompson is there. One-on-one, -on -one, that would be a hard play for a secondary man to make in the open field to see Reggie Cobb coming at him. Here's Reggie Cobb. Nope, fake. Penton's going to throw it long. Anthony, uh, uh, Alvin Harper. Penalty flag, Bob. Alvin Harper, the pass is overshot. But there's a marker back at the 38-yard line. Harper was open. Harper was wide open. Again, that was the same post pattern. Some other scores. Duke was on five yard penalty on the defense. Offside Duke. Washington has beaten Purdue 38 to nine. Miami of Florida crunched California 31 to three. It looks like Miami and Notre Dame are gearing it up for a run at the national championship. LSU has jumped out on top of Florida State early. Three nothing and Auburn leads Southern Miss 10 to nothing. NC State on top of Wake Forest, 7-3. And we'll keep you updated on scores throughout the course of the night. Tennessee with Chuck Webb on the pitch. Got blockers in front of him. Keeps his balance. Bowls his way to the 30-yard line. Hard running by Chuck Webb. That's a first down on the first and five. And Eric Volk comes up from the strong safety spot to make the stop. First time tonight that the Volunteers came out in an unbalanced line, Bob. They had the tight end and two wide outs to the wide side of the field. Took advantage of it on a pitch sweep. Webb right here does a good job to get away from the tackle and bowl his way down for a first down. Volk wrestles him down, 6-3 from Glenarm, Maryland, making his first start of the year. That's a famous football name when Volk right there, Bob. Didn't his uh, dad play for the Colts the year they went to the Super Bowl? Exactly. Had a timely interception to help him win it back in 1970. And a little premature. He's going to be about six inches short of a first down. And now, Sterling Hinton wants a timeout. We're over two on. Oh, bad Jesse mark. Eubank. Bad mark there. I, I thought so too. The scores now. Uh, stats, excuse me. First down, Tennessee with four to three, or trailing three to uh, four to three to Duke as the Blue Devils. Of course, Tennessee hadn't had to have first downs. They've been getting the big play. Rushing seven yards. points over first downs any time. Exactly. Tennessee out rushing them by six. And passing Tennessee's winning the statistical battle right now for Tennessee individually. Chuck Webb four rushes for 16 yards and Cobb six rushes for 20. Total offense Tennessee winning the battle there 76 to 57. Tennessee fans will be glad to see that Von Reeves was back in action on that last short yardage play so he must be in good shape after his injury earlier. 
Tennessee again sticking to its pattern of running the football. They've only tossed the ball once, and that was the big play to Anthony Morgan. They did try and throw one to Alvin Harper, but that was overshot. There was a penalty play uh, on that play. Von Reeves was back in his timeout. Tennessee didn't like what it was getting from Duke, so they called timeout, and it's second down and short. Too tight formation. I backfield. Hand off. Nope. Hanton's going to throw it. Now he's pressured. He's got lots of room to run. And he's going to have a first down inside the Duke 20-yard line. Eric Volk pushes him out of bounds, but Hinton will have a first down for Tennessee. Hinton makes the play pass fake there. Gets some pressure from the inside using his speed. Coach wants him to pick that ball up. Good stiff arm there. Runs it out of bounds before he gets any damage to him. Good play by a quarterback. Gains the first down, keeps from getting hit and injured. Out of bounds, line up, and let's start again. Hanton is having a great year passing the ball. He's 16 of 21 now for the season. Hand off, Chuck Webb, knocked down at the line of scrimmage. Good surge that time by Anthony Allen of the Duke Blue Devils. Duke came with everybody except the kitchen sink, it looked like. They hit every gap coming and going and got in the backfield before the play ever had a chance to get started. Doug Cly was there, 78, Mark Allen. Sophomore linebacker, he was there. There's the Duke Huddle, John McDonald, big number 99. Duke's pride was a bit bruised the last couple of weeks with all the yardage and the points they've given up. They'd like to gear things up a little more, but Tennessee's got them to the wall right now. It's 14 to nothing, and Tennessee's driving inside the 20. Reggie Cobb at tailback. Hinton checks off at the line again. Up the middle, the handoff. Good running by Roland Cole. Quentin McCracken on the stop, but Poles has big yardage right up the middle. Good run by Poles here. Hinton saw something that would leave the middle open. There was a big gaping hole, and Poles just broke two tackles right there, running over the third, heading for Pater. Quentin McCracken finally makes the stop. We talked to Bob Harris, the Duke play-by-play -play announcer, and he said, you know, it's not a matter of Duke not being in the right position. They're just not tackling anybody, and that was the case right there. Reggie Cobb, first and goal inside the seven. The standing tailback gets the ball. Gets close. Down to the two. Nothing fancy here, but good hard-nosed football. Eye back set, two tight ends. Let's run it at you and see what you're made out of. Randy Sally makes the stop. 5'11", 200-pound senior linebacker on the outside. 12 minutes to go. Second quarter, Tennessee on top, 14 to nothing. The volunteers have been very impressive. Duke has had problems moving the football. Cobb stats tonight going for his third touchdown in the first half. Cobb, somersault close. Penalty flag on the play. Eric Volk came up and kept him out of the end zone. Now they're talking to Sterling Hinton. Looks like it might be another offside on the Blue Devils. Violation of neutral zone, defensive line, five-yard penalty. So that'll be half the distance. Tennessee will take the penalty because they get an extra down. And there's Reggie Cobb. Missed spring practice because of disciplinary problems. Had a rough year last year. Only three touchdowns. Had wrist problems and ankle problems. And, and he admitted he had a disappointing sophomore season. But he's come out this year and is running like gangbusters. Coming into tonight's game, he had 33 rushes for 176 yards. And he will add to that total tonight. You know, I was sitting around doodling a little bit, and I figured out at the present pace, Cobb and Webb could both rush for 1,000 yards this year. Has that ever happened in the Southeastern Conference? I'm not sure. I know it's never happened in Tennessee. Tony Thompson now in, along with Reggie Cobb. And the Duke defense has got to gear it up. Ambler's the fullback, and Cobb's right on his tail. They're going to be taking the gap. Ambler. Touchdown. Greg Amsler scores his second touchdown of the season, and the Volunteers jump out to a 20 to nothing lead. Amsler, one of the most improved players on the team. Nothing but power football. Submarine and down there. Amsler going over the top. He out jumps the jumper there. Knocks number 25 back into the end zone. Look at this leap. That was Sampson who got knocked back. Tony Thompson again through another clearing block. And Amsler gets the touchdown. 11.34 to go. And now Greg Burke trying to make it three for three on extra points tonight. Twenty-one to 
nothing, Tennessee. Reggie Cobb's got two touchdowns. Amsler has one. Tennessee, eight rushing touchdowns this season. Volunteers lead by three touchdowns. Great start on a good foot. Best thing about UT? Probably the best thing about UT is the atmosphere here. The best thing about UT is its uh, faculty, its people. The people? Probably the people. I personally think I have one of the best jobs in the world. And it would be a shame not to, to be here. She's got the, the uh, complete student heart. If you go to her with a concern, she's, she's going to speak to you honestly. And being available to students is one of the important things that faculty can do. She's more interested in the students than in the program. And I think that's exceptional for the school of society. Tennessee scoring play. Took four minutes and eight seconds, went 57 yards in 12 plays, and Greg Amsler capped it off with a touchdown. And Tennessee leads 21 to nothing. Greg Burke will kick it off again. Spin it down to Jones again. There the goal line. That's a three. Jones gets the seam. He's got some open room. Greg Burke gets the leg on him and knocks him out of bounds. Great open field play by Greg Burke. Jones took it across to the wide side of the field, hit a seam on the near side here before the Tennessee bit. Looked to me like he might have a chance to go all the way, but Burke came over, got his head in front, and tripped him up. Yeah, Burke just threw his body at him. He did this on an earlier on Burke's the Colorado State I think we've got a player there, not only a kicker, but a player. Yeah, he made a good stop in the Colorado State game and also recovered a fumble last week on a kick. Big return by Randy Jones, and Duke has good field position. Best of the night. At the Tennessee 44-yard line. Right up the middle, Randy Jones. Penalty flag, you just saw it fly into the picture. Darrell Hardy again makes the stop. Mark Moore is down there, and also 72, James Wilson. For the flag, it looks like it may be holding. Jimmy Harper is sorting things out. On the line of scrimmage, holding an offensive line, 10 yards from the previous spot, the first and 20. Duke having hard times tonight, Bob. Whenever they get their best field position tonight, first play penalty, take them back to near midfield. Notice that Kerry Bailey is back in there for Tennessee. Cedric Klein, number 30, is in as well. Excuse me. Well, yeah, and Duke will march it back 10 yards on the hold, so it's first down and 20 to go. Duke, you got to figure, has got to throw the ball. Linebacker's five yards off the ball, playing loose, playing pass. Pressure. Ray is knocked down. Picked up not quite half of what he needed. He needed 20. Marion Hobby makes the stop. Ray drops back in the pocket. Really just a three-man rush there. Kerry Bailey dropped off in the short pass coverage, too. Hobby and Kerry Bailey in yep. on the top after a good run, though. Second down. Still a long, long way to go for Duke. They've got to get down to the 34-yard line. Boone's the man in motion. Ray's got time. Now he hits his slant man. Walter Jones knocked down by Mark Moore and Terry Bailey. There's the West Virginia tandem in the defensive line. Both starting tackles from West Virginia here on the play. The wide receiver Jones drags underneath the two other boys clearing out. Cutting back and seeing the pursuit come right there on a big tackle. So now it's going to be third down and long yardage, third and nine. Billy Ray trying to get his signals across. He'll be checking off. Look at a long man there, Bob. Brought to the far side. Boone's in motion. So three wide receivers to the left side or the upper part of your screen. And he's going to throw it long into traffic and nobody's home. Jennifer Clarkson Hines, but there were three orange shirts around him. Pass is incomplete, and Duke's got another decision to make. Ray seemed a little confused. He walked up behind the guard to get the snap at the start of the play. There was a screen option where they ran him back out into the flat, showing screen, but Hines was into the pattern, and they tried to throw it down the field. Tennessee had good coverage on the play. Well, you're down 21 to nothing, but you're way back. And so there's the net punting tonight. Tennessee has the advantage. And now Zerber, the tight end, steps in again. That's a better kick. Wobbly kick. And Duke's got a chance to down this one. 
Bobble it around, and they do. Nice job of the Duke punting team that time. 41 yards on the punt by Bud Zerber. And now Tennessee will have it at the two-yard line. They got to drive 98 yards. Mike Keith. Bob, if I was on a defense when I played, they gave up 21 points in the first quarter. There usually was a lot of screaming and yelling. It's not that way on the Duke sideline. As a matter of fact, they think they've got a plan. They say Sterling Hinton is looking exactly where he's throwing instead of looking off the defensive back. They're going to gamble and see what they can do. They're down 21 points, and Bob, they've got to do something. Yeah. Back to you. Mike, they might not have to throw it anymore up 21 to nothing. That's the problem there. Very true. I wouldn't worry about him throwing it. I'd look where they're running the ball. That's where the success is so far tonight. Hinton's got to take another timeout. You know, Ron, that was a problem last week in the UCLA game. Tennessee burned three timeouts early, and now they burned two here in the first quarter, uh, in the first half. They're shuffling in some players. It doesn't seem like they're having to ride 11 men on the field to get the drive started. Of course, they're backed up on their own two-yard line. You should put two tight ends and try to protect yourself till you get some breathing room there. Tennessee leads it 21 to nothing. Next week, the Volunteers have an open date, and in two weeks, the Auburn Tigers come to town. Ray now, 9 of 14 to the air for the Duke Blue Devils for only 36 yards. Well, you saw a shot of Coach Majors there on the sidelines. He was disturbed for the fact that the Vols had to waste another timeout this early before the half. Yeah, you don't want to do that. Tennessee backed up at its own two-yard line. Important thing here is for the volunteer backs to keep hold of the ball, get both arms on it, wrapped up tight, not letting a turnover happen because Duke's going to be clawing something, trying to get something to make a good opportunity for the offense. It well, doesn't get much easier for Duke next week. They play at Virginia. Virginia had a big win today against Georgia Tech. Hand off up the middle. Good running by Roland Poles, and he gets Tennessee some operating room. George Edwards makes the stop on Roland Poles. Six foot, 215 junior from Caledonia, New York. He and Amsler run very well, Ron. Run good, hard nose, head on head. Screaming, what effort there. Poles attacks the tackler. Instead of catching the blow, he's the one that gives it there. That's what you want on first down, six yards. So Henton now has a second down and four. Again to the fullback, Amsler this time, but he's shut off. Fell makes the stop short of the 10-yard line. Maybe a yard. Tom Kerpus also. Fell cut the, the defensive coach's eyes for the Blue Devils last week, and the first game he really saw extensive action make 15 tackles against the Northwestern team. 8.30 to go. Second period. Tennessee on top of Duke, 21 to nothing. Elsewhere, Nebraska, ranked number four, knocked off Utah, 42 to 30. Utah's got that great quarterback, Mitchell. He had a big day against a good Nebraska team. Third down conversion. Tennessee is 3-3 three three tonight, and the handoff goes to the fullback. He'll be close. Hamsler. Depends on where they mark him. Sally really penetrated well there on the snap. He was blitzing coming in. Give Hamsler credit. Him and Sally met head up on the hole. He spun away from him, got the first down yard he's needed. But Tennessee's perfect on third down conversion. Four out of four. Mark Allen also there for the Blue Devils on the stop. Now Poles comes in and Hamsler goes out. Rick Moore was also with the Tennessee. He leaves. Reggie Cobb is the tailback. 7.50 to go. Second quarter, 21-0 Tennessee. Tennessee keeping the two tight ends in the game. Cobb running him up the middle. Reggie makes the stop. Big 6'4 senior along with Preston Anderson. 6'4, 260 junior. Tennessee will not run. I wouldn't expect them to do many things fancy down here. They just want to get some operating room. Nothing fancy, just good head-to-head -head football. Run the fullback isolation right up the middle. Three-yard gain. Coach Majors wants a little bit more of that on first down. He has to have four or five yards to feel comfortable. Go to the seven-minute mark, second period. Tennessee trying to bring it out from the two-yard line. And now it's a 16. Cole. Luke stepped him off that time. Again, Mark Allen is there. Along with Tom Corpus, number 91. Tennessee just working the clock. You know, you talk about the clock, and you're keeping the ball away from Duke. And around the old story, they don't got it, they can't score. Possession is nine-tenths of the law. It's nine-tenths of the win as well. <laughs> 
Tennessee. Big third down play here, though. They've been perfect on third down so far tonight. Hanson's going to throw it. And he's got his man at the first down. Alvin Harper steps out of bounds in front of Wyatt Smith. And Tennessee holds on possession. 13 yards on the play. And Alvin Harper makes the reception. That's his sixth of the season. He's averaging 16 yards per catch. That one for 13. Broke the dive play. Come back out on the bootleg. Harper hit wide open on the sideline route for the first down. You just get a feeling that once the ball's getting some yardage, they're going to throw the ball up. Wide, the defensive backs are playing about 10 yards off the ball. Hand off to a spinning Tony Thompson. He's spun to the ground. Preston Anderson is there. And also Mark Allen right up the middle. Tony Thompson, the strongest running back on the team. Bench press is over 360 pounds. Was bothered by leg problems all during the preseason. Missed the first game. Didn't play last week, but's in there tonight. Tennessee thinks he's going to be a good one. He's a very tough-nosed kid. Only 5'7", 176 from Lake Wales, Florida. That's 200 pounds almost over his uh, body weight. Exactly. That's a good print. Henton's going to throw it again. Nobody open in the flat, and he's going to run out of bounds. Short yardage gain on the play. Needed nine for the first down, picked up a couple. Clock stops at the 540 mark. Good coverage by the Blue Devil secondary there. Hitting wisely, rolled out to his right. Couldn't find anybody open. Skirted the ball out of bounds there, and no harm done. Steve Spurrier trying to get something going. Can't score when Tennessee's got it. Duke hasn't been able to find a way to stop him yet. Three first half touchdowns has staked the volunteers to a 21-0 lead. That's disaster. That one fell apart. Flood of elephant play, and Tom Corpus just went right after Hinton and knocked him down. The Tennessee's going to have to punt it away. What happened here, Ron? Tennessee had three wideouts in the game. The Blue Devils were blitzing all their front four people plus two linebackers. Not enough folks to block the ones that were coming. The fake there didn't fool anybody. 91 was there before the tackle, or excuse me, Eric Skill, the pulling guard, got to it. Wyatt Smith is deep for Duke. Ken Elmore to Pawnee standing at his own 12. Clock is down to five minutes. Duke would like to get on the board. They almost blocked it. A few more to send the rocket. Smith back. He is swarmed under Chad Gooden. The center is down to make the stop. So there's Houston Thomas, 54, and Von Reeves is down. Good coverage by Tennessee on a booming punt by Kent Elmore. That's that extra spin you want on a big, deep spiral. Great hang time. Give the coverage team a chance to get down. 44 yards on the kick. Daryl Spells almost blocked it. But Elmore got it away, and then Tennessee stuffs them. And the Blue Devils take over at the 31-yard line. There's the story. Apparently, Elmore's recovered from that ankle injury he's had early in the year. Well, he got into that one. That was a beautiful kick. High spiral. Ray's going to throw it. Got his man tied in. First down. Kalana makes the reception. Kelly Days knocks him out of bounds. Kalana was one of five Blue Devils in the top seven in the ACC in receiving last year. But well, they're going to mark him short of the first down again. I'm well, I'm over four on those tonight, Ron. I better just wait. Wait for the call. Exactly. You can never outguess the official. He's got the last call. There he is. He played basketball at Duke a couple of years ago. Through the javelin on the track team yeah. as well. What played an athlete. Team handball, as a matter of fact. I wonder if he fills programs at halftime. I'll tell you what, he's a great athlete. Second down. Going he's for it all. Out. Over his man oh. and nobody's home. They threw it long. It was intended down there for Walter Jones. Closest man to the football was Mark Fletcher. Sophomore out of Cincinnati. And so now Duke will have a third down and short. So on second and short, Ray basically just threw that one away. There was nobody open. Well, that's the time you do take a shot at. You feel like you can get the third down yard. You go ahead and waste this down and see if you can come up with an interference or a long completion. Brown's the fullback. Brown chugs ahead, gets across the 40. Should have the first down. James Wilson makes the stop for Tennessee. 
There's a true freshman, Wilson, into the game, getting some valuable playing time due to necessity with a couple of injuries. You've got Kerry Bailey taking Mark Moore's place at left tackle now, and Wilson over at the right tackle slot. There's a big Duke offensive line, Michalski, 6'5", 275. Delarco, 6'4", 285, he's a senior. Kerry Metz, all-conference center, 6'1", 265, senior. Chris Ports, another senior. Pete Petroff. Four got, seniors and a junior. Exactly. He got a man wide right open to his tight end. Same Alana. pattern they completed before. Fights his way inside the Tennessee 40. Four minutes to go. Shazan Bradley makes the stop. Tennessee back in a prevent defense, dropping their linebackers back, keeping everything in front of them, crossing the tight end there. Duke does. Five and hole there. Up comes Warren in the secondary. Still gaining that first down yardage. Duke's got plenty of timeouts left. They've got all three. The clock is under four minutes. Duke would love to get on the scoreboard here before the end of the half. They're executing a good two-minute drill right now, eating the clock up. Or excuse me, not eating the clock up and moving the football. Tennessee trying to get pressure. One more time. That time he goes to his other tight end, Bud Zerber. Keith Dents in the corner on the side, makes the stop, short of a first down. Same route, run the two backs right up the field, hook them up short to draw the linebacker's attention and run the tight end across into the boundary. Duke taking its time, and the clock runs down three and a half minutes. There's the clock. Second and four. Boone, who's been pretty quiet tonight. The running back to the near side of the screen. There's a shovel pass. Boom. First down inside the 25, and Keith Denson finally stops him. Help from Jason Julian coming over. Denson makes the play, and Boone's got a first down. Denson did a good job that time. The receiver came down, got in his face, tried to shield him off, and really used him to make the tackle. You can see it here, the Utah pass. That is considered a pass, but if the ball's dropped, it's an incomplete pass. Clarkson Hines has been very quiet tonight. He's flanked out to the upper part of the screen. Hines, number 12, see if they go to him. Double team. They drop it off to the short man, tight end Zerber. He's knocked out of bounds. Crunching hit by Daryl Hardy. Clock stops, 2.47 to go. Same pattern. Duke's working on something here. They're trying to get the Tennessee defense to move up, move up, move up. And as soon as they do, Ray will pick it up over their head and try to go deep. Zerber. They don't have to go too deep, though. The ball's on the 21. Second down. Five yards. Tripped right on the play. And he's rolling that way. He's being chased that way. And he throws back across the field to Kalana, the tight end. Doesn't get out of bounds. Doesn't get a first down. Tracy Hayworth runs him down along with Ernest Fields. Great reaction by the Tennessee defense. Tracy Hayworth and Ernest Fields weren't fooled. They stayed home, hustled back when they saw the pass coming back across the field to keep the game as minimal as it was. There's Hayworth from Deckard, Tennessee. Hayworth has had 12 total hits and two and a half sacks. You can run as a former linebacker. You can get out of position in a hurry on a play like that. Oh, the play looks like it's going to the wide side. Everybody's sprinting that way. You've got to stay home and stick to your knitting and cover your responsibility. Hayworth running the play down from the backside. Big play for Duke. Hand off to Boone. Boone inside the 15, fights his way to the 12, and has a first down. Hayworth again rolls him down, but not before Boone stops the clock at 158 and collects the first down. Walker tried to scrape into the hole. Sean Walker, I'm speaking of, the Tennessee linebacker, just missed the play, didn't get his head in front. First down, Duke. We talked about Tony Thompson bench pressing a lot of weight. Boone bench presses 330 pounds. He's rushed tonight eight times for 46 yards. Clock moving, first down. Duke trying to get on the board. The crowd trying to lift the Tennessee defense's effort. Good coverage here. Ray's going to roll to his right. He got some room, dumps it off to his fullback, who is knocked out of bounds. Chris Brown makes the catch, and Fletcher knocks him down. Good tackle by Fletcher in the open field. Clock stops on the play. That's exactly what Duke wanted. They picked up a couple of yards and got the clock to stop. Ray finds nobody open here. He's rolling to his right, directing traffic. Mark Moore in hot pursuit. As soon as the catch is, look at that attack by Mark Fletcher, knocking him back down and out of bounds. Second down, two yards to go. Four and a half yards for a touchdown. 
You may hear footsteps the next time they throw it to him. Boom. Just out, goes in motion. Hines, a wing back to this side, looking for Hines. Not open. Billy Ray's in trouble. Crunch out of bounds. Again, Fletcher knocks him down. And Shazan Bradley. And it's going to be now a third down play for Duke. Fletcher's making his presence known over here on the left corner. He steps up there. Ray was tiptoeing down the sideline. Fletcher let him know that he wasn't going to come around his end. Billy Ray has completed seven straight on this drive. Here it is on the replay. She's on arm tackling there, just misses him. But Fletcher doesn't. He lowers the boom right there. Timeout has been asked for. Duke takes it. They have two timeouts left. And now they got to plot a third down play here. Tennessee has seen Duke take this ball and move it down the field. I guess, Ron, you, you know, you always talk about psychological aspects and that kind of deal. Duke could score here before the half. It would be a big, big lift. Explosive. Explosive. If Duke's offensive is, a score here would make them feel like they're right in the ball game. Just 14 points down going into the half. It's got to be a moral lift for them. Well, the plotting goes on the sidelines as Tennessee and Duke try and figure out what they're going to do here. And a very, very big play coming up. Tennessee leads in the game 21 to nothing. Tennessee brought their whole defense over to the sideline to talk to them on that. I don't know, I get kind of tired of having to run to the sideline every time they were a timeout. I hated that when I was a linebacker calling the plays. The whole team must be pretty tired, too. They need the crowd to lift them up here to rise to the occasion and to keep Duke out of the end zone. Crowd in the south end zone, making a lot of noise. Three wideouts in the game. Third and four. Penalty flag down. Pass incomplete. Jason Julian was there on defense for Tennessee in front of Alder Jones. Looks like hold on the Duke offensive line where the penalty was thrown. Now, if you're Coach Majors, do you move them back and give them another down to score, or do you leave it at fourth down? That's why we're up here. That's why there's a checkerboard down in the end zone. It sounds like it's a chess game to me. I'm guessing they're going to move them back. Well, the field goal kicking team for Duke's coming off, so maybe they know more than we know. And they're going right back off. I think Steve Spurrier thought they were going to decline the penalty, but they've taken the penalty, and now Duke will have two shots a, a to make the first down. That's a tough call to make because with the penalty, you also give them that much more op yardage to operate in within the goal line. Well, there's a stat impressive on this side for Billy Ray. Third down and nine. Back in motion. Left. Oh, big rush. Big rush. He's back to the 10. Mark Moore, Carlton, West Virginia, coming through in the middle, making the play. Well, now there's no decision, I don't think, for Duke. They're going to have to kick the field goal. Tennessee defense makes a big play on Ray. Mark Moore, 6'4", 260. Had 13 total hits coming into the game tonight. Well, here's the first field goal attempt of the year for Duke, and they don't have enough men on the field. They're running one in late. The Randy, counting down. Randy Gardner's going to try it. He's a freshman. Tough he's angle. Good. He kicks it well and kicks it through. So Duke's on the scoreboard with 44 seconds to go. Duke gets a field goal, their first of the year. Randy Gardner kicks it through. And now Tennessee's lead is cut to 21 to 3. But, Ron, Tennessee's defense kept them out of the end zone. They did a great job defensively in the short yardage inside the 20 yard line. It's hard to operate. They were shifting their defenses right before the snap of the ball, trying to confuse Ray, and it must have been successful because they had everybody covered. Duke had the result for three. Last week's uh, victory, Tennessee over UCLA, is now available on videotape for your home VCR. The cost is $29.95 plus $3 for shipping and handling. Send $32.95 to UTV Home Video, P.O. Box 11125, Knoxville, Tennessee, 37939. Or call during regular business hours at area code 615-584-7043. You can use your Visa or MasterCard. Get your lasting souvenir of what was a big, big win in Tennessee football history last week over the Bruins at the Rose Bowl. It's available from UTV Home Video. 
Now Duke will kick it off. 44 seconds remaining. Tennessee leading Duke 21 to 3. And Gardner, who had just kicked the field goal, will kick it off. Kicks it long and high. Spins it down to Carl Pickett. Got room to run. Breaks the seam. He's in midfield. Pickett's got great speed. And he's knocked out again by Dickerson, the same guy who made the stop on Thomas Woods' punt return. Saves another touchdown. It's Carl Pickett, an explosive kickoff returner. Almost lights it up. And he's going to see fan that was heading to the restroom and the concession stand had to come back. It crowds at its feet. Pickens doing a great job on the return. The kick was high, but it came up short to about the 12-yard line. He waits on the ball here. Hits the seam. This is what the coach is wanting on the kicking game. Give a man like that room to go, and he's turning it on. Cutting outside. Dickerson once again makes a touchdown saving tackle to keep the balls out of the scoreboard. Second big stop for Dickerson on the special teams. Hinton's going to throw it. Got a man open. Amsler inside the 25. Knocked down by Mark Allen and Fields, the linebacker. Here's where Tennessee's hurting without having their three timeouts left. They got to go into the hurry up offense. The clock's ticking. They just got one timeout. And they'll call the play at the line of scrimmage. Run back set. Lifts it out. Got his band. Alvin Harper out of bounds. First down. 16 yard line. Harper from Frost Proof, Florida makes the catch. And right out on the play. Yep, it's in the Tennessee back, but I didn't see it. Good eyes, Ron. Could be an illegal procedure from where they threw it. Anytime you're in the two minute drill, it's You've got to be very disciplined. Holding on the offensive line of scrimmage, 10 yard penalty. Holding on the volunteers, takes them out of field goal range. With six seconds to go, they've got an opportunity to maybe throw one more pass down the field. If it's completed, they've got to get a timeout in order to get their uh, field goal team on the field to have a shot at three points. The ball's back out to the 34 yard line, making that a 41 yard kick. So really, they don't take a whole lot more yardage to get them in field goal. Burke booted a 45 yarder last week against UCLA, Tennessee takes its final timeout. But this would be, what, if he kicked it from here, we're talking 51, 52 yards, so that might be out of Burke's range. Ball fans from Maine to Malibu are using a brand new service this season to keep up with Big Orange football. They're using AT&T dial -in. It's a 900 service that will hook you into the live ball radio broadcast of each Tennessee game. If you've got a friend or a relative who lives outside the reception area of the Vault Network or you're on vacation and can't hear the game, tell them about it. You can call it up. Dial it. 900. The number 1-900-903-VOL. Here's John Ward, Bill Anderson, and the rest of the Vault Network crew each week if you can't hear it on your regular radio. Six seconds to go. First half. Ron McCartney, Bob Kessling, and along with Mike Keith here at Neyland Stadium. So far, return yardage tonight on especially the two big plays, the return by Carl Pickens and Thomas Wood punt return, 108 yards. Six seconds to go. Well, if you're the Tennessee offense, do you throw the ball deep into the end zone hoping for a penalty or maybe a touchdown? Or do you try to get a short pass and not run the timeout for a field goal opportunity? Four wide receivers, and they're going to the end zone. Hinton gearing it up, throwing long for Harper. Harper, a high jumper, too long in the first half was come to a close. You throw it to your high jumper, Alvin Harper, for the pass just a little bit long. But Tennessee goes to the locker room with a very impressive first half performance behind him. Two touchdowns, Reggie Cobb. One touchdown, Greg Amsler. Duke got a late field goal, but Tennessee leads it 21 to 3 here at halftime. Ron, John Majors goes to the dressing room. I'm guessing very happy with his first half. His team looked very efficient in the first half drives. They were. They were very efficient, but I know he's disturbed about the fact they didn't even get a field goal opportunity there at the end of the half. They squandered their timeouts and didn't get a shot at the goal line. Mike Keith is down with Coach Majors right now. Mike? Coach, was that a set play right there to go to Alvin Harper? It was a play to go to an optional receiver, not just to one receiver, scoring who we thought open. And uh, that was the man looked most obvious, plus he's a high jumper. And uh, that's who he decided to throw to. He said, if any question, throw it up high for him in the end zone. How big was it, Tennessee holding Duke to a field goal down there? You've got to be pleased with your defense. I'm very pleased that we held on there. Duke has a very dangerous, dangerous football team. And I thought that was a tremendous goal line stand. Uh, this ball game is a wide open affair. And we've done some mighty good things. We just can't let up. We've got to keep pouring it on and get better because their team, is, you never know what they can do. Coach Majors, thanks for being with us. We appreciate you taking time out and good luck in the second half. 
Coach Johnny Majors of the Tennessee Volunteers, whose team leads the Duke Blue Devils 21 to 3 at the half. The Volunteers, an eight point favorite coming into this game, and they've looked good. Their three scoring drives Reggie Cobb, two touchdowns, and Greg Ansler, meaning all eight of the ball's touchdowns this season have come on the ground. Back upstairs. And Tennessee will be back deep to receive it. Waiting for the sign, and we're set to go. Duke's got an uphill battle against the Volunteers. Gardner will kick it off. It'll come to the near side. Terrence Cleveland will field it at the five. Gets out past the 20 to the 25, and that's where Tennessee will start it. First and 10. Late penalty on the play there. Might be a face mask or roughing. Right in the middle of the pile. Mark Allen makes the stop on the Duke coverage team. And if he's walking back towards their end, it looks like it might be an offensive penalty. Yeah, our spotter Steve Early said it's a clip. Jimmy Harper will make the final determination. And they're moving it back inside the 15-yard line. I didn't see a sign, but I think it was a clip. 14.53 to go. Tennessee again has got to go a long way for the touchdown. First touchdown, five yards, uh, five plays, 60 yards. Second touchdown with a short four-yard drive after Woods touchdown, a uh, Woods punt return. And then Tennessee's next scoring drive, 57 yards. Handoff, Reggie Cobb. Blasted down by Doug Fly and Daryl Spells. Fells has been in on a lot of tackles tonight. Ampler was the lead blocker. Fells, real active there. Tennessee's running the two tight end back in their own backyard, the goal line there. But they're taking big splits between their guards and tackles. They're trying to spread out that wide tackle to the defense with the Blue Devils. Tackles for Tennessee are Anton Davis and Charles McRae. The guards are Tom Myslinski and Eric Still. The center is John Fisher. Sterling Hinton's the quarterback. Needs five yards. Cobb picks his way. Gets the cross for 25 and shut out a first down. Aaron Sampson makes the stop for the Blue Devils. Here's some other scores to update you on as we watch Reggie Cobb again pick his way. Good blocking again by Tennessee's offensive front. Clemson leads VPI 10 to nothing, third period. Florida State has gone ahead of LSU. That's a game neither team has won yet this year. Florida State 0 2, LSU 0 1. Big Florida State leads at 10 6. West Virginia over Oregon, or Washington State over Oregon State, 27 to three in the third. Auburn leads Southern Miss, 17 to nothing in the third. Pitch back to Reggie Cobb. Nice cut to the outside, picked up an additional three yards. Ran behind the block of Charles McCray and Tom Purpose finally comes over and pins him. Motion there made it an unbalanced line to the wide side of the field, but pitching on the sweep to Cobb, Duke. Brings the play out well. Doesn't really give Cobb a chance to break back and hit a seam upfield. They covered him for a short gain of about five yards. That was Eric Volk, number seven, that stuck his nose in there. He got the first hit on Cobb, slowed him down a bit. Reggie trying to chuck toward another 100-yard gain. Second down, four. Same formation of the wide side here, only it's a dive. Cobb corralled by Doug Cly and also Aaron Sampson. Coming up from the secondary. They'll be short of a first down. We played two minutes in the third period. Tennessee on top, 21 to three over Duke. Volunteers have kept the Blue Devils out of the end zone. There's Cobb. Had a spectacular freshman year. 1,100 plus yards, 20 touchdowns. Scored the three last year, but he's got two touchdowns tonight. 47 yards rushing. Tennessee needs three yards for a first down. Cobb doesn't do it. Great play of that time. A penetrating John McDonald comes up. McDonald just sat submarined in from the end position there, got upfield. Right there's where the play was headed. They lead with Amsler trying to block on the linebacker isolation. And there's McDonald submarine in it. Good play. 6'4, 240 from Wagram, North Carolina. So Tennessee. Can't get another first down. And Elmore's in the punt again. Eight-man rush. Another high-floating spiral. 
bounces really in back of the Tennessee coverage team and will roll dead at the 32-yard line. There were four orange shirts ahead of the punt. They didn't uh, run it. It was hanging so high. And so Duke will get pretty good field position as they take it over for the first time this half. Ball will be marked at the 32-yard line. Duke with Billy Ray at quarterback, Roger Boone, and Chris Brown in the backfield. 11.46 to go third period. Billy Ray has got to crank it up a notch if he's going to get back in the game. Really, Ron, this is a big possession for Duke. If they can score here at the ball game. They're coming out with a split slot open. Passing formation. Fakes. Got his man. Fullback. Chris Brown. Across the 45-yard line. Should be enough for a first down. Sean Walker drifts out from the linebacking slot to make the stop. 11.36 to go. Ray sends both backs out, the tight end, and two wide outs. They have seven men in the formation. There's one of them got to be open somewhere, and he found the right one on his second look. Duke's playing a little hurry-up offense now. They get right to the line of scrimmage. And Billy Ray barks out the sign. He's going to throw it. Got a man streaking, but he overshoots him. Waller Jones had a step, but the pass was too far and out of bounds. Daryl Hardy was there. Jason Julian from the safety position on that side of the secondary broke on the ball, too. It was just overthrown. So Steve Spurrier looking on, trying to get his team in the end zone. They've scored a lot of points this year. 41 last week against Northwestern. Trying to find some answers tonight. Second and long. Drops it off to Clarkson Hines. And Hines is swarmed under Fletcher and Preston Warren. He hasn't touched the ball much tonight, Ron, so I guess they're trying to get it to him. Hines, other than the time he came across the middle and Preston Warren let him know where he was, hadn't had the ball since then. They run the drag route with him coming back underneath. Good pursuit by Tennessee. Really no place to go but down. Five yards and a bunch of headaches. Third and five. Crowd again, trying to get into it. Trying to urge the Tennessee defense on. Big third down play for Billy Ray. In the outside linebacker on the blitz. Good Got drop off. Man. Should be a first down. Chris Brown on the reception. Preston Brown pins him. Preston Warren, excuse me, pins Chris Brown. We talked about Hines. And uh, on the official stat sheet, he doesn't even make it. Boone and uh, Kalana had four catches in the first half. Hines has got the ball. Not often tonight. Not often enough, at least for Duke. First time we've seen the Tennessee defense send the linebacker. Hardy came from the backside, but to no avail. Bray fakes the draw. Throws over the middle. Complete. Again, he goes to the fullback. Chris Brown. Sean Walker makes the stop. Tennessee's linebackers are taking about a 12 to 15 yard drop. Deep trying to help the, the secondary as far as underneath coverage on the wideouts leaving the middle of the field open for the back to run about a seven, eight yard turnaround and just catching the ball for a good game. Clock running, 9.47 to go, third period. Hands off, Boone cuts outside, nice move. Turns the corner, rushed out of bounds at the 24 yard line. Kelly Day's over there to make the play on Boone and what a quick move to the outside. Hayworth at the right end position, didn't really keep contain on the play, tried to jump inside to help on the tackle. Boone recognizes it immediately here, as you can watch him just jump outside, run to open field daylight, picking up good yardage on just a simple dive play. 9.32 to go, clock stopped to the out of bounds, it's also a first down. Ball at the 23 yard line, Boone in the eye formation, gets the ball, gets the hole, to the 15. Fights his way to the 12. Jason Julian stops him. Duke has looked very impressive. Ron, what have they adjusted? What have they changed at halftime? They're just coming out in the same drill they had. It's just like a two-minute drill. They're running short passes, running draws, dives, mixing the plays up. They gave him a pass look there. Hand the ball off to Boone on the sprint draw. He ate up good yardage right up the middle of the, six, uh, the Tennessee defense. Now split back. Boone and Brown. 
There's a shovel pass. Not, nothing there. James Wilson comes in to make the stop. Wilson, the freshman out of Hampton, Virginia. Originally was going to go to Virginia Tech. Then wasn't admitted to school and came on over to Tennessee. And he's been a welcome addition to a Tennessee defensive front that has been really hurt hard with injuries. There you saw Wilson take a side on the pass rush, but keep his man in between him and the ball carrier to throw him off and help make the tackle. Good play for a freshman in there at right tackle. Clarkson Hines has been very quiet. He's only caught two passes tonight. He's flanked out wide to the right. There's a shot of the tennis shoes that the Duke line are wearing. There. Second and ten. Ray's got a sink. He's at a five. Spins it down inside the five to the four. He'll be two yards short of a first down, and Sean Walker finally got to Billy Ray and put him on the turf. Ray didn't hesitate that time. He saw the opening and took off. Three-step drop. The initial man was covered. He touched the ball up and runs north-south there. Better cover it up quick. Coach Spear doesn't want to get him hurt. Well, Tennessee's defense will be tested again. They held two down right before the half. Held up to a field goal. It's the big third down play right here. to the student section in the south end zone. There's a crossing pattern to Hines. Good oh, man. Dead and it's there. Oh. by Walker. Good play at the line of scrimmage. John Walker almost got the interception on a, another pass deflected. The second one tonight. Hobby got one. Looks like he got, did he get, I can't see the number. It might have been Hobby again. Looks like Hobby got up in the air, did a good job. The ball was up in the air after he tipped it. Could have, should have been intercepted, but all the balls are mad because they missed the golden opportunity there. Another field goal attempt. Again, Duke only has 10 players on the field. Gardner will try another one. Randy Gardner, a freshman. One for one tonight on field goals. And that one looks pretty good, right through the middle. So Duke connects with 7.21 to go in the third period. That was a goal line play offensively that Duke has used with much success this year. They put Hines in motion, try to run him underneath the line there on the snap of the ball all the way across the field. Ray was looking for him. He looked like he may be open, but Hobby got up in the air and got his hand on the ball. Yeah, it was Hobby. Let's see if we can get a good shot of it. Let's see who misses the tip there. There's the ball right between Walker and Kelly, was that Kelly Day. Kelly Day. 39. But Marion Hobby, the second time tonight, has deflected a James Ray, a uh, Billy Ray pass on a key third down situation. Tennessee's that close to making the turnover, doing something they haven't done a lot of this year. Create a turnover, get an interception, a fumble. It's going to come sooner or later, the harder they work. Scoring drive for Tennessee, or for Duke, 11 plays, 68 yards. Gardner, a 22-yard field goal, caps it off. And it's 21 to 6. Duke hanging in there. Now it's time for the Duke defense to gear up and stop Tennessee if they want to get back into the ball game. They were able to stop them on Tennessee's first possession this half. Kick, long, high, again goes to Carl Pickett at the seventh. Cuts back, a lot of white shirts, and they run him out of bounds. Good coverage again by the Duke defense on the kicking team. And down there, Tom Rhodes, along with Quentin McCracken. Let's go back to the sideline of Mike Keith. Guys, part of the problem Tennessee had on that last drive, at least defensively for the Volunteers, Mark Moore out with a shoulder injury. How serious it is, we do not know. Dr. Bill Yeomans has examined it. He's walking around the sidelines. I don't know if Mark set it back in or not, but he's in a good deal of pain. Moore, of course, desperately needed for Tennessee's defensive tackles as they're depleted. Bob. Okay, Mike, the offense now on the field, on the spot. Duke jumps, freeze play. See if Corpus got back. That's something Tennessee's offense has used to good advantage, changing the rhythm of their cadence with their quarterback, draw the lineman into the neutral zone, and snap the ball before he gets back. As soon as he steps across and they snap Offside, it. Offside, violation, neutral zone, defensive right, team, the first down, five to go. As soon as the ball is snapped, Hinton puts a knee on the ground, so he's down, the play is over. Watch it right here. There's Corpus jumping. Fisher There's snaps snap. it. And that's it. Five free ones. Cotton jail right there. Here are the penalties. Duke with five and Tennessee with three. Duke had six last week. So they're right on schedule. Sterling Hinton with a first down and five. Screen pass. 
Very well defended by Duke. It was thrown out there to Anthony Morgan, and John McDonald winds out from his end spot to make the stop. McDonald wasn't fooled one bit when the Tennessee offensive line gave him a pass set, didn't release. He just cut in the tackle's back pocket and chased down the ball carrier from behind. I'll tell you what, there was a threat of rain tonight, but it is an absolutely beautiful night for a football game. Temperature in the 70s, 67 degrees. Yep, 67 on the clock downtown. Beautiful full moon over Neyland Stadium. And Tennessee has got the advantage now, 21 to 6 over Duke. Hinton to let it go. Got his man. Tight end, Vaughn Reeves on the reception. And that'll be a first down for Tennessee. Rodney Dickerson comes up to make the stop. Cobb's primary receiver was covered. He dumped it off out here on the flat. Reeves doing a good job coming back after that sore knee, getting back into the game, getting his first catch this year. Turning it upfield for the first down. Looks pretty good running the ball there, too. Yeah, he does. First and 10 volunteers at the 45. That's Reeves' first reception of the year. Tennessee has not thrown to the tight ends much. Chucky Webb up the middle. Stopped by Preston Anderson, and Webb picks up a pretty good chunk, maybe six. Tonight's attendance, 93,651. So again, another big crowd for a Tennessee home football game. Volunteers will come up the line on a second down and four with 5.54 to go. Third period, Volunteers lead it 21 to six. Duke walking up to the line, looking like a blitz. Here they come. Henton, he's in trouble. It's a foot race, and Henton gets out of bounds. He lost a yard. Good pressure, Corpus ran him down. And also Preston Anderson gets out there. Those big guys have some pretty good speed, Ron. That's right. Duke did a, a late blitz. They waited till it was too late to check the play off at the line. Sterling did a good job getting away from the first contained man, but really had to scramble for his life here, getting just almost back to the line of scrimmage. Third and four. Amsler's the fullback. That's Von Reeves, the wingback. Hinton fires it out. Has his man. Von Reeves again. He looks like Dale Sayers out there. Turning it back into the middle. Eric Volk gets to him, but Von Reeves has a first down. He wasn't going to run out of bounds. He wanted to hit somebody. Von turned it up. He looked like he was looking for somebody to come hit him. He took the ball under. Here's Hatton again. Sterling's back, circles the field, finds Von. Man-to-man -man coverage. The linebacker there with went for the interception, tried to knock the ball down. Von turns it up. Says, come on, let me go find somebody to hit. Look at him carrying the ball. That looked like Gale Sayers in slow motion, didn't it? Running back coach, or excuse me, <laughs> tight end coach Sparrows will have a word with him about the way he's carrying it out there like a loaf of bread. That's time they try and go straight ahead. The Cly and Daryl Spells making the stop. Hamsler on the carry. And again, Tennessee is cranking the clock down. It's under five minutes in the third period. There's Hinton's stats tonight, rushing the ball. Or passing it, excuse me. Six of eight. Second and four. Or excuse me, second and nine. Duke walking up again, faking the blitz. Let's we'll see if they're coming. Seven men on the line of scrimmage. Corpus <laughs> almost got caught again, got back. And late clock down to four. Kenton. That ball's deflected the line of scrimmage. I think Corpus got a hand on it. So turn about fair play. Hobby got one, and Corpus decided to get one. See the, the Duke Blue Devils taking the gap, trying to get pressure on Sterling Hinton. It checked off to a quick crossing pattern, but the ball was deflected. Looked like the coverage was there, too, so it might have been a good thing for the Volunteers that did get knocked down. Yeah, that was, that was not Corpus. That was Preston Anderson on the oh, play. Third down nine. A big Anderson in the middle got a hand on it. Hinton going for the end zone. Got a man out there it is going to be deflected away alvin harper double teamed rodney dickerson again another touchdown saving play he's had two on special teams and that right there is he was one-on-one -on -one with alvin harper great job by dickerson here he was beaten early in the play but he used the flight of the ball in the air to catch up 
reach over his shoulder and just knock it away right at the last second. So it's a fourth down. Duke has stopped Tennessee from scoring. And now the Volunteers get Andy Kelly into the game. Dickerson, 5'10", senior. He saved 21 points tonight on special teams. Duke doesn't know that Kelly's in there to punt. They're playing their short yardage defense. Kelly's going to try and pooch it down there. Of course, remember, Andy's also a quarterback. His fourth punt of the year is going to be angling, and it's going to be down at the one-yard line. Vince Moore got down there to keep it from going in the end zone, and Charles McRae pins it. Great play by Tennessee. They keep Duke off guard there. They don't know whether Tennessee's going to go for it on fourth down or they're going to punt the ball. It gives them a chance to get the coverage men down there, keeping the ball pinning Duke back on their own goal line. 4.04 to go. Johnny Majors sees his kicking game work as Kelly pins them back. Mark Moore, we are told, who had a bad shoulder, is now back into the game. Situation, you got to gear it up. This is crunch time. 21-6, to six, Tennessee on top. 4.04 to go, third period. And the crowd comes alive. They're trying to exhort the volunteers for a big play. Ray's going to throw it from his end zone. Dumps it out to Boone. Short game. Casey Rogers comes up from his linebacking spot. 97 is Sean Truss, who just come in, has come into the game. There's not, they're staying with the game plan, Ron. The short passing drop. game. As soon as the back turns around, short three-yard game, but they're getting them off the goal line. But Tennessee will give them that pass all night, won't they? They keep moving it up the field. That short yard is even going to hurt you. As long as you're not throwing it down the field for big plays, it's as good as a run. It keeps the clock running. Here's Ray in the end zone again. Another short pass. Brown, the fullback. Jerry Bailey. Todd Kelly is 58. He's a true freshman now into the game. 6'4", 225 freshman from Hampton, Virginia. At the first down, so the clock stops as they move the change. 3.20 to go. Third period, Tennessee 21-6. to six, And the clock rolls down for the fourth period. Todd getting an opportunity to play due to the injury of Dwayne Dotson, who's out for this game. Dotson might be out of the rest of the season. He had orthoscopic knee surgery this week. Good-looking freshman is Dotson from Hendersonville. Here's Ray. Mark Moore pressures, but he gets rid of it. And the pass is complete. Sean Walker with a big hit, along with Casey Rogers. Pass was complete to Chris Brown again. There's big Mark Moore. A shoulder problem. Ron, you had a chance to watch Moore play in high school. What kind of athlete was he in high school? Mark lined up at a nose guard at 6'3 and about 220 pounds in high school. And he ran from sideline to sideline, took his high school Stonewall Jackson to two states final championship games, winning one and losing one during his career there. There's Ray, 147 yards. He's 8 of 9 this half for 63 yards. All short stuff though. Another short pass. Boone got it this time. Grabbed around the ankle by Casey Rogers. That'll be short of a first down. Clock continues to run. Two minutes left to go third period. The clock is very much in Tennessee's favor. That's the one thing the short passing game's doing. It's eating the clock up, but it is keeping the position in Duke's side, and they're up to the 25-yard line. You might look now for them to start throwing the ball down the field a little bit farther than just four and five yards stuff. There's another quarterback sneak. Should be a first down. Boone, as you saw, has already caught seven balls tonight. Mark Moore was there to make sure that Billy Ray didn't break it. Coach Chavis said that Mark Moore probably had more potential than any lineman he's had an opportunity to coach. He's yet to fulfill that potential, but it's out there and it's in the game right now. Yeah, he reminds a lot of people around here of Reggie White at the same stage. A lot of young, raw talent, and really how good he wants to be is up to him. He's been working very hard. Good practice this fall, and Coach Chavis is real proud of him. Minute 20 to go. Third quarter. Another little quick drop-off. They get out to Walter Jones. Jones is dumped by Preston Warren, Sean Walker. One minute to go. You know, if you're ahead in the game, this offense is great. You control the ball, but when you're behind by this many points, you're eating up the clock and you're not getting any points. One minute and counting. Tennessee. There's Todd Kelly, the freshman.
Gray. Looking short. Got to go run downfield. He's scrambling around now. Now he finds his man. He's got Brown, the fullback, and he's out of bounds. Mark Fletcher knocked him out, but good heads-up play by Billy Ray. He didn't panic. He knows, I guess, Ron, at this point, if he runs it, that's what Tennessee wants him to do. Three-man rush by the Volunteers. They're dropping even a lineman off for the short stuff underneath, not really pressuring and giving Ray time to wander around, find that open receiver. There's more passes going to their fullback tonight than there have been all season long. I bet you Brown's got more balls tonight than he's got in practice all year. 37 seconds to go. Clock is stopped at the out of bounds. One back set. Let's see if Ray decides to air it out anytime soon. Clarkson Hines is open and he drops it. I tell you what, Hines, if you remember, if you were with us earlier, he got dinged on the first time they threw the ball to him by Preston Warren. And he just had one of those nights. But Ronnie, as a defensive player, you know if you go out there and stick somebody early, they remember. They get what uh, defensive backs like to call alligator hands. They don't go out too far when the ball comes their way. It's sort of <laughs> hard to hold on to it that short. Alligator hand. That's it. 31 seconds to go. Third quarter. 21 to 6 Tennessee and Ray's going to put it up again. Got his Van Boone. Hardy makes the stop. Ernest Fields cleans up. That will not be a first down. Boone took a pretty good shot that time. Clock rolls. 15 seconds to go. Let's see if Duke gets another playoff. There's Hobby, not really putting pressure. See, he's just kind of playing a center fielder there, not rushing up the field, trying to get another hand on the ball. After you tip two, you think you can do it every time. And Duke's going to let the clock run out to end the third period. The only scoring in the third quarter, a field goal by Randy Gardner, a 22-yarder. We go to the fourth period. Tennessee leads by 15 as we head to the final 15 minutes. There's a gorgeous shot. That's right above the south stand at Neyland Stadium. Boy, just a perfect night for football. Tennessee is enjoying it so far. 21 to 6. Duke struggling to try and get back in the game. Tennessee has done a great job of shutting down Duke's outside game. Walter Jones and Clarkson Hines have not been much of a factor. The inside guys have done the damage. Boone has got seven. Brown has got six. Big third down play against the Duke to start the fourth period. Third and two. Boone is going to have a first down. Jazon Bradley is there along with Tracy Hayward. Let's go back down to Mike Keith. Bob, we told you earlier about Mark Moore's injury uh, to his shoulder. Apparently the big problem with it now as he's come out for the third time complaining is they can't figure out exactly what's wrong. Also, Andy Kelly loosing on the ball sidelines. We saw him just a minute ago to check. Will he come in to play quarterback? Well, no, sir. Yeah, we see Mark Moore down about the 36-yard line. The training staff is talking to him. The first down, 10 yards to go for Duke. Touchdown here and a two-point conversion makes it a one-touchdown game. Boone with a Utah pass. That's how they snuff it out. Wilson doing a great job of defensive tackle. Got right up in the middle of the play. As soon as the ball came, he was there to make a minus yardage tackle. Wilson, a nice play. Here's some other scores. Folks watching tonight, North Carolina. This one of interest. Clemson is leading VPI 13-3. Florida State leading LSU at halftime 10-6. Washington State on top of Oregon State 34-3. Auburn winning in the fourth period 24-3. NC State leads Wake Forest in the third period 20-17. Tennessee faking a blitz up the middle. And the team Duke beat last week, Northwestern, losing to Air Force, 31-17 in the third. Little quick pass. Double pass. They're trying to throw it back over to Darrell Clements. Throws it across the field, back to the quarterback, Billy Ray. He's got wide open spaces. Ray cuts back and gets inside the 10. Well, they saved the trickery. Darrell Hardy comes over to finally knock down Billy Ray. They throw it to Clements, who throws it back to Billy Ray. Here it comes. Double pass. Clemens turns, looks downfield, throws it back. Good job of setting up the play, running the fake. It looks like Ray for a minute may go all the way here. He's got a wall of blockers in front of him. 34 yards. Was that a set play? Definitely a set play. The quarterback throws the ball to the flat, has an opportunity to throw it down the field. If not, turn around and flip it back to Ray, who's wide open. They're pulling out all the stops right now. Big possession here. Boom. Gets the handoff. 
struggles inside the five. Nice effort by Boone. Ernest Fields makes the stop. Of course, Boone had a brother who played here. Ran a kickoff back for Duke that really broke Tennessee's back a couple of years ago here. Wilson makes a good effort diving, trying to cut him up. No job there, but Fields comes through and just tripped him before he gets to the corner to head for the checkerboard square end zone. So, Roger Boone trying to do some damage like his brother did, Greg Boone. One back set, rolling to the wide side. They got three people into the formation over there. Ray throws. It's deflected away by Preston Warren. Preston Hines defense. didn't like it. And Preston Warren pleads his case to the defense. I think he's going to get some support from the crowd, at least in that section. Let's watch it. Sprint out with Ray. Boone in the front, making a cut block. Preston Warren coming right on time, knocking the ball out. That's a good swat right there. Hines, of course, is having a tough night, and he's wanting some help from the striping shirt official. Not that time. Third down and four. Duke, Ron, they've got to put it in the end zone this time if they want to stay in the game. A lot of pressure on Tennessee. Got to hold them out. One back set, three wide outs, one tight end, and a running back into the game. 15th play of this drive. Third down. Incomplete intercepted. Fletcher deflected off the hands of Kalana right to Mark Fletcher. That's something for the Tennessee fans to cheer about. They've been knocking at the door all night long. Great effort off the deflection. Fletcher picks it off. Tip drill by Fletcher. Big play. Second interception of the year by Tennessee. Preston Warren had one last week. And big play by Mark Fletcher in the end zone. First turnover of the night for the Volunteers. That's something to get excited about. That's Ray's what? rolling out to his right. He's trying to hit his tight end who's rolled into the flat. Right there's one tip, two tips. Oski with Mark Fletcher right there. Good hands. Yeah, Ernest Fields got a hand on it. I didn't think he touched it. But there's the guy who intercepted it, Fletcher. So Tennessee gets the ball back. And now they go to work with a running attack. And Tom is knocked back. Strong tackle that time by Anthony Allen, yeah. Anthony stepped up. A lot of blitzing now, a lot of slant and a lot of stunting. Duke's got nothing to lose, and they're shooting the gaps. They're trying to create a turnover on their own. That was Mark Fletcher's first career interception. There's a stat Coach Majors likes. Let's get up on the turnover side. Tennessee hasn't turned it over often this year. Hey, yep. got some room. Going to throw it. It's deflected. It would have been an out of bounds anyway if Alvin Harper would have caught it. Good play by Eric Volk as he knocked it down. Volk doing a good job there at safety. Strong safety. He covered the zone, laid out into the flat, didn't really come up and force the play, and just got a hand on it. Now it's third down and nine. If Duke can stop them here, they'll get the ball back in pretty good field position. Two tight ends for the Volunteers. Yep, he's gonna air it out. Alvin Harper trying to catch it, he won't do it. Harper turned on the Jets, but Sterling Hinton just reared back and threw it as far as he could. Almost 70 yards in the air, he yeah. threw that football. You know, it's not often that you think you can out throw a guy like that, but Hinton really aired it. He uncorked it and just didn't have quite enough hang time. He's underthrown a couple people deep tonight, and he made sure that one was out there. If it wasn't caught, it wasn't going to be intercepted. Duke's going to try and block this punt. Tennessee quickly gets Elmore into the game. Duke's going to send 10 after it. Here they come, right to your living room against Ken Elmore. Ooh. That was Spells that almost blocked it. The Kraken Bumble. fumbles. Tennessee ball. Houston Thomas recovers the ball. There's a penalty marker down. The Kraken came up to make the catch. Bear caught it. Bobbled it. And Houston Thomas, one of Tennessee's best on the special teams, recovers it. The question will be whether they gave the receiver enough room to catch the football. If not, it may go against the Volunteers. Harper's microphone is out, and that's exactly the call, Ron. They didn't give him enough room to catch it. Of course, the kick, Elmer did a great job of getting the ball up in the air, but he just didn't really get the foot into it for enough distance, and conversely, the, the Duke receiver had to come forward to catch the ball. 
Here you can see it. You've got to give a man three steps to catch the ball, and it's pretty close right there. That's, yeah. that's a questionable call because right there, Houston Thomas, who Coach Major said would run through a brick wall to be a volunteer, came up with a great recovery, but to no avail with the penalty. So Duke takes over at the 35-yard line again. Duke's got a great opportunity to make this a one-touchdown game, but they're running out of time. That's a long throw over to Hines. Spins, fights, doesn't get a first down. Hines, boy, Ray threw that ball about 50 yards across the field. 50 yards across and about eight yards down the field. Tracy Smith in now is an extra defensive back for Tennessee, and Daryl Hardy makes the reception. There's Boone and Ewell. They got some talented skill people on the Duke team. Just when we thought the Vols had some breathing room, they're back into the end of their end zone, fighting for a chance to keep Duke out of the goal. Second down short. Boom. Looking for running room. Finds some. Turns the corner. Hardy drags him down as he gets close to the 20-yard line. Looks like Hobby had a good angle with contained there to stop that draw play for no gain. But Boone is so shifty and quick, he jumped right outside out of his grasp. Look right here. We've got a good defense set up. Turned his shoulders up the field. Just out right into the corner. Kelly Days, 39, also over there to make the stop. It's the first down from Blue Devils. First and 10, balls at the 21-yard line. Billy Ray trying to get the Blue Devils into the end zone for the first time tonight. They were offside, it looked like. They're going to stop the play. Kalana, the tight end, came off about a beat too early. These tight ends aren't quite as fast as the wideouts, and they need every help they can get. He just jumped the gun That's trying to get down ball. the field. Illegal movement, offensive line, false start. Five-yard penalty. Well... You know, you go back, Ron, and you look at plays and put yourself in a bad situation. Duke had a pretty good opportunity. First and 10, now it's first and 15. This makes it tougher. There's Clarkson. Hines last year had eight catches for 145 yards tonight. Two catches for 18 yards. Still got 10 minutes plus to go, though. He's definitely not shut out yet. And a lot of time left. Trip formation is the wide side of the field. There's the screen. Good play by Daryl Hardy. Hardy. And cleaning up on the play was Todd Kelly. Kelly, I think, is the freshman from Hampton. That's the first time he really unloaded on somebody. But Hardy, we mentioned his quickness, Ron, throughout the course of the broadcast. He just snuffed that out and was right there waiting for Randy Jones. They've seen that a lot in practice this week, a lot on the field. Hardy reacted real well, outran the blockers on the play, came up for a big minus yardage tackle, really putting him in the hole now. That was Hayworth, 88, and Todd Kelly who cleaned him up. There's Hardy. Cincinnati Princeton. Comes out from the fine high school football teams in the country. Princeton and Bull were up in Cincinnati annually among Tennessee, the nation's top ten. Tennessee in their nickel package. The two linebackers faking a blitz. And they took too much time. Billy Ray takes too much time. It wasn't bad enough. It was second down and 22. Now it's going to be second down and 27. Dead ball, delay a game, too much time, offensive team. You think the Tennessee alignment caused the confusion, Ron? Oh, it sure did. Kelly came up under the huddle, and he saw two mad starling linebackers ready to come across the ball. He had to check something off quick and didn't really have time to do it. There's Duke, the most penalties they've had this season, seven. Nine minutes to go, clock runs. They move the pocket. Ray's looking for somebody. Throws it down the field, and he overshoots his man. Walter Jones is open. But the pass is too high. And now what do you do? Credit Marion Hobby on that play. They loaded on him. The, the tackle was blocking him, and then the fullback came out to load, and he kept contained. Kept forcing Ray wide, making him overthrow the pass down the field. Clock has stopped at 8.52 to go in the game. 21 to 6, Tennessee on top of Duke. There's Steve Spurrier. You know, keeping these guys out of the end zone, if Tennessee can do it, that's news. And it's going a lot of points since Spurrier has been the coach. Let's see if he's got another trick up his sleeve, Bob. Now's the time to show it if he does. Hines in a slot. He runs right straight pocket. down the hash mark. They throw to the out man, and that's going to be intercepted. Intercepted by Daryl Hardy. Now he loses the football. 
but it's recovered by Tennessee. Hardy makes the interception. Kelly Days recovered it. And the volunteer defense comes up with another big play. Kelly Days recovers the bobble, but Daryl Hardy made the play. Same play as before, exact same pattern, the same rollout. There's the double. Throwing it deep to the same area because the man was open before, but this time Daryl Hardy was back in there making a good interception. Tuck that ball up and put it away. He tried to change arms there. He's a former offensive tackle now playing linebacker and then trying to play running back. End of the game now is Kelly's the quarterback. Bob Hinton's on the sideline. Andy Kelly taking the snap. And the pitch back goes to Chucky Webb. And he is knocked down before he gets to the 15-yard line. Webb hasn't had a whole lot of room to run tonight. Eric Volk makes the stop. Andy Kelly getting his first opportunity to play since the Colorado State opener. Sophomore from Ray County. Chuck Webb, seven rushes tonight for 21 yards. So Webb, after the big game last week against UCLA, has been corralled. Pretty much after his fullback. Big offensive line pretty much has gone the entire way. Mike Linsky and Still, Ray, Anton Davis, John Stickers. Safety's up. Just got the play off. Webb trying to turn the corner. Get the block. Get the first down. Good hard runner by Chuck Webb. Erwin Sampson makes the play. Amsler threw a block at the corner, and Chuck Webb picked up a first down. There's the pitch. Well, it wasn't Amsler on the block. He went the wrong way, I think. Block out there by that was Von Reeves. Von Reeves did a great job on the strong safety who came up on the play and hooked him in order to let Webb get down the field for the first down. And off to Amsler this time, plows ahead. Now the clock is ticking away against Duke and Tom Purpose on the stop for the Blue Devils. Tennessee next week at open date. Volunteers next game will be coming up against the Auburn Tigers in two weeks here in New York City. Mike Keith on the side. Mike. Bob, the problem Duke had on the last series, running plays in and out. They forgot, or apparently the player who was supposed to be running them in forgot. A five-yard penalty, a confusion, and Duke ends up turning the ball over. Didn't look like a Steve Spurrier coach team there, Bob. Seven minutes to go. Pitch back to Webb. Webb, center step to the 35. Runs over people as he gets that close to the 40. Erwin Sampson took the run of Chuck Webb's run that time, and Webb comes out for a breather, and Reggie Cobb gets back into the game. Here's the pitch again. We want to remind you, you're watching tonight's game, Tennessee versus Duke on video seat. Whenever possible, video seat will bring the University of Tennessee football games live on your local cable system. If you live in a system that doesn't have video seat, contact your local cable system. 6.56 to go. Reggie Cobb, running room. Breaks a tackle to the 40. Reggie Cobb to the 30. Cuts it back inside to the 20. Gets around both down to the 5. Touchdown, Cobb! What a run! What a move! Cobb's giving high fives all the way into the end zone to the crowd! Randy Stelly was the only guy left. Cobb broke the tackle with 61 yards. Tennessee leads 27 to 6. And there are fireworks above Neyland Stadium. Above Neyland Stadium and on the field as well. That looked like vintage Reggie Cobb from two years ago. What a terrific run by Reggie Cobb. He goes over 100 yards with that one. Cobb 15 did. carries for 109. Great cutback. A lot of great cutbacks on the play. All Reggie. Good talent. Good run. Greg Burke on the tip, the extra point. Got it. 28 to 6, Tennessee. Reggie Cobb in 1988 had one game where he rushed for 100 yards. It was against Duke. He went 182 yards. Tonight, over 100 yards again. And Ron, what a great run. Cutting back to the weak side, just a handoff at seven yards deep. He sees the hole. He outruns the corner man. Now it's just a foot race. Watch the moves he puts on. Right there's a missed tackle. He uses his blocker, cuts back across, and just outruns him to the goal line. Yeah, you look. Dickerson had a shot at him. Sampson had a shot at him. Eric Volk had a shot at him. Dickerson's what? Saved two touchdowns tonight with big saving tackles, but it wasn't to be right here. Randy Sally got a hand on him. 
There's Sally number 30, but can't bring him down. Reggie Cobb scores his third touchdown of the night, and Tennessee leads 28 to 6 with 6.43 to go. And there's Cobb. Tonight, Tennessee, 220 yards rushing, passing 98. Duke has been held to 67 yards rushing the football. They're cracking deep for Duke. Tennessee trying to run its winning streak to eight. And they're well on their way to doing it. Jones again. He's a speedster. And he's dragged down. Good coverage on Tennessee's kickoff team. Preston Warren was down there. Aaron Flavelin, the little offensive receiver, comes down, gets in on the tackle inside the 20. Also down there for Tennessee was J.J. McCleskey, the freshman, out of Knoxville. Andy Kelly has had a chance to play. Reggie Cobb's had a big night, three touchdowns. Auburn has beaten Southern Miss tonight, 24-3. Florida State beating LSU now in the third period, 17-14. Hand off to Jones. He's hogtied by James Wilson. Tennessee lucky on the play. Really, when the ball was snapped, they had 12 people on the field, but the official didn't see the last man running off. All it is is a draw play. Wilson, once again from his right tackle position, doing a good job for a freshman, pulling him down for a tackle, a short game. Duke tonight with 213 yards throwing the football, only 67 yards rushing. But now they've got to make up three touchdowns and a two-point conversion to tie. New quarterback in the game, too, Dave Brown. He's on the money. And he completes it to his tailback, Randy Jones. Well, the defense, I'd say they fit the, that T-shirt tonight, fit the bill. Tracy Smith in the tackle. It's a strong safety position. Seeing his first action tonight. Tackle by Tracy Smith. There's Brown, Westfield, New Jersey. Last week, or the first game, I should say, was one of four. Passing. This will be his second game to play and Now he just runs the quarterback draw. James Wilson to get the stop. Let me see him almost a prevent defense. They got their front four on the line of scrimmage, but all the linebackers are at least five yards off the ball. Everybody's taking a back pedal with the snap, making sure they don't want to get beat deep, but give them the short yardage and let the clock run. Johnny Majors anxiously watching the clock tick down. His football team on the verge of being 3 0. On the verge of gearing up for what will be a mammoth confrontation with Auburn in two weeks. Pass is complete. Pass goes to another tight end into the game for the Duke Blue Devils as Duke now is going to start running people in and out. That's Aaron Shaw, a sophomore tight end from Orlando, Florida. He makes the catch in front of Fletcher. And Preston Warren. Five minutes and counting now. Trying to get Duke into the end zone. Something the starter, Billy Ray, couldn't do. Four-man rush. Tennessee's dropping everybody else deep. A little shovel pass inside. The new fullback into the contest is Duke. And that's Randy Cuthbert, running back, sophomore from Chalford, Pennsylvania. That'll be a first down. All it is here is just a trap draw play right up the middle. They just cross block the two down line and knock both linebackers out. Big hole right up the middle for good yardage, but once again, all the volunteers want to do is let the clock run, get the game over with, and go home with a big win. Four minutes and 42 seconds, the clock counts. Dude's just taking a sweet time. Brown looking, fires it, and almost intercepted by Cedric Klein. Boy, that was close. That was touchdown city right there. Cedric could hang on to it. Cedric will see that in his sleep tonight. He played it really well. He dropped off the ball as a strong safety. Got some depth. Quarterback scrambling around looking. It was right there. He could have took it and walked into the end zone. Exactly. Let's go down quickly to Mike Keith, Mike. For the Duke Blue Devils on offense, if Tennessee goes back out on offense, if they do get the ball in the last 424, the second unit pair appears to be ready to head in. They're all getting loose on the sidelines, so keep your eye out for the new face. Brown's looking to throw it long. He's got a man there. Jones with an acrobatic catch. Walter Jones hauls it in. Inside the 25, Mark Fletcher. 
over on the coverage, but uh, Jones is their deep receiver, Bob. He's averaging almost 17 yards a catch so far this year. On the deep crossing route, he's, the quarterback has plenty of time. Good catch right there to keep his feet inbound. Well, that's a terrific play by Walter Jones. They've got some talent at wide receiver. 28 to 6, though, the team is down. Duke trying to get it in the end zone. Pressure. Man's open. Complete. Nice catch. Again, that Darren Shaw. And he hauls it in as the clock ticks down to four minutes. Mark Fletcher rolled him down. Zipka is not in the hurry up at all. Clock runs down to four minutes. Duke still going with its first team offensive line for the most part. Tennessee seven, eight yards off the ball now with their linebackers. They're giving them all the underneath stuff. And the pass. It is intercepted. Here we go. Intercepted. Ernest Fields at midfield and rolls over the quarterback, Dave Brown. Ernest forgot he was on offense there. He went and made a great tackle on that quarterback who really didn't want a piece of him, but Ernest laid him on his back and he had the football. You know, Fields is a former fullback. When he first came to Tennessee, many people thought he'd be a running back. He looked like a running back there. Fields, the linebacker, just gets in the seam. The ball Another is kick drill. It. Ernest, good hand. Picks the ball up with all them pads on, still puts it under. Now watch him turn right here about midfield. He sees the quarterback. Boom! <laughs> That's the hardest lick Brown will take all season, I'll tell you that much. 3.37 to go. Andy Kelly is the quarterback. We'll try and pick up some of the new offensive linemen. That's Clemens McCroskey, the fullback. He's in there. Rex Hargrove is 71. Mike Stoll. Patrick Lenore is 65. Larry Smith, the big freshman from Milan, is in there. Tony Thompson. Here's again the tip drill. This is the second time Tennessee's run the play with the tip. Good reaction. Good hands by Fields. Look at him. He tucks that ball under, gets his hand over the point. It's off to the races. Now watch right here at midfield. Boom! What a lick! <laughs> he could have cut it back. He took the hit. Tony Thompson at tailback. McCroskey is the fullback. He was getting tired, Bob. That's as far as he had to run all day. McCroskey. Nothing there. Fox under... Three minutes, Tennessee second unit, and some of the third team guys are getting a shot to play tonight. Tom Corpus and Doug Clee make the stop. At the conclusion of tonight's video see telecast, we invite you to tune into your local Vol radio network station for more post-game coverage. We'll have interviews from the locker room with players and also have an interview with Coach Johnny Majors on tonight's Tennessee win. Vol Nation, uh, Vol network stations. In the area, you're watching video seats tonight, WIBK AM and FM in Knoxville, WSIX AM and WRLT FM in Nashville, Chattanooga, WDOD AM and FM, Memphis, WREC AM. Here's Kelly, jump of the pass down, that's complete. Down the sideline goes Von Reed. He tucks it in and gets inside the 12. Boy, that's the second time Von's had a chance to run on the open field. Von showing his stuff tonight. He left the game early with an injured knee, but he's come back to put on two good runs here. They're in blitz coverage. He's got one-on-one -on -one driving to the corner. Kelly does a good job of lacing it in there. Now watch Von turn up the field. Then he's, unlike Ernest, doesn't want to run over anybody. He makes them miss him. Almost breaks the tackle there. Good run. First down to volunteers. Under two minutes to go. There's Vaughn. Three catches, 54. His best night as a volunteer. Tony Thompson fights his way inside the tent. Brian Spivey is 57 now in its center. Mark Allen makes the stop for Duke. Then it's been a real good effort tonight from Tennessee. Duke, I'm sure, disappointed they couldn't get the ball in the end zone. Here's some of the more of the radio stations as you look in your area. And the Ball Network postgame coming up. We hope you'll stay with us after our video, after the game is over on video. See, we'll have an interview with Coach Johnny Majors and hopefully a couple of players. Tennessee on the wishbone. Chucky Webb is back into the game. They run the option. Kelly, the ball knocked free. Webb scrambles after it. Duke picks it up. Mark Allen scoops it up. Kelly didn't make a good pitch that time, and Webb couldn't handle it, and Duke has stopped the drive with one minute to go. And now Duke... There's a fake on the dive. Down the line option coming. 
Kelly drawing the attention from the outside linebacker there, or safety rather. He waited too long to pitch. He waited pitch too long. In fact, the defensive man got a hand on the ball before he ever got it off. That was McCracken who came up, and Allen recovers the ball. So good defensive play that time by the Duke Blue Devils. Reggie Cobb now with seven 100-yard games in his career. Cobb tonight was the big gun for Tennessee with 15 rushes for 109. Good run by Cuthbert that time. Under a minute to go now, 55 seconds. 28 to 6, Tennessee's going to win it. Fletcher made the stop on that play. Once again, Tennessee's dropping off 5, 10 yards, giving them anything underneath. Just wanting the clock to run. Let's get this one over with. Enjoy a big victory and have a week off to get ready for the meat of the schedule. Big stretch drive with four crucial Southeastern Conference games coming up. Brown's going to throw it. Ball almost intercepted again. He didn't catch it. Good play by Fletcher over there. Fletcher's really driving on the football well. Once it gets in the air, you see him driving to attack all night long. He's having a good game. Greg Downs, number 20, was the intended receiver. Two weeks, Tennessee and Auburn. Georgia's around the corner, then Alabama, LSU, a big, tough four-game SEC stretch for Tennessee. But they've started off the season with three straight wins. Duke is just going to run the clock out. 28 to 6. Tennessee gets Sean Trust in there. They can stop the early days. Ron, this is one of those games where a lot of young people get a chance to play, and you practice hard, and you want to, even if you play for a minute, it's still satisfying. It's a chance to get into the game, the goals that the team has set, they've reached, they've done a good job. Anytime you get out on the field in front of 93,000 people, you got to feel good about it. And the clock is going to count down. Duke has one last shot. They just run the ball, and the game is going to come to a close. Tennessee has won and has run its winning streak this year to three in a row and overall eight straight as Tennessee comes off with a 28-6 victory at Neyland Stadium in front of a sellout crowd. Brock, I think if there's any question about Tennessee being emotionally sound after the win against UCLA and being on an even keel, I think those questions were answered tonight. This was a very well-prepared Tennessee team that did exactly what it was supposed to do. Tennessee came out, they created some turnovers, they intercepted passes, they knocked the ball down, they controlled the line of scrimmage. The big thing they did is they got ahead early in the kicking game with the big punt return. The things that Coach Majors was looking for a Tennessee football team to do got them ahead of the game. They played like they were ahead in a better football team all the way down to the very end. So a big win tonight for Tennessee. Coach Johnny Majors is down with Mike Keith. Let's go down to the sideline. Coach Majors, I didn't notice any overconfidence out of the balls tonight. None whatsoever. We played an awful lot of good football out there tonight. Duke did too. They have an awful scrappy on defense. This day and time, you just can't look past anybody. They gave us a thrill a minute, but we did some terrific work in our defending. We sagged some, but we kept them out of our end zone. That was excellent. They made our, they tested our offense to the hilt. And the last run of Cobb, a good run by Webb, making the first down right before that. And our kicking game was really probably as big a difference as it was all the, all, the whole game as the margin went. It was just a, uh, a lot of good work, and I'm very pleased with our team. You covered all my questions. Tell us about your preparations for Auburn in two weeks. Well, we haven't started yet. It took all of our effort to get ready for Duke. We're going to take a, we're going to give them off Sunday, Monday, and Tuesday, and uh, uh, then we'll start back with practice on Wednesday and go uh, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, maybe Saturday morning, and we've got a lot of improvement to make, but. I couldn't ask to be in a better situation as far as our record right now, but I'd like to see us get a lot better. Thank you, Coach Majors. Congratulations to him. The Tennessee Volunteers win it 28-6, Bob.